Hey everyone, I'm super, super excited. Today's live stream. You're going to see me struggle, um, but don't worry. We've got Mark here who's going to help me. And we've got Copilot who's going to help both of us. So Mark has joined me on many Twitter spaces. It's so awesome to have you here. Um, please, Mark, give yourself an intro. And while you're doing that, I'm going to drop your uh, GitHub link into the, uh, into the chat as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Eddie. Um, love to be part of the Eddie Hub community and being on this live stream with you. Um, yeah, so about me, I'm I'm about a full stack developer for about, yeah, about 10 years now. Um, started very basic with Python, um, started building full stack apps with Python and MongoDB. Then my friend really convinced me that Ruby on Rails is the way to go. And I, yeah, I started building with Ruby um, until today, actually. And then most recently, I think about six years ago, I or was it no, it was 2000, 2016 or so, I got into uh, more and more JavaScript related stuff and especially Next.js as well. It was quite early on. Um, Vercel didn't, was not called Vercel at the time, it was still called now, now, S, now SH um, or Zeit. Yeah, it was actually called Zeit. Um, and yeah, we started building on Next.js already back then uh, with a couple of friends. Um, and it's just incredible how the ecosystem developed over the years, um, building on top of React, of course, but Next.js itself, they, they were just like have an immense pace in terms of development. And it's such a fun community to be part of. Uh, it's very visual um, and very much, you know, focused towards getting something live fast, you know, which is what we're doing here today as well. Yeah, it's going to be super awesome. And I think you've already started answering some questions. And so, for example, you've got a question here um, and it says, is it okay to work with React and Next.js at the same time? And my answer would be yes, because I think it already includes React. But Mark, please give a, a more accurate answer than the little knowledge that I know. Yeah, so Next.js is actually a framework that's built on top of React. React, of course, is a framework built for the JavaScript ecosystem, um, and it does a lot of abstraction layers already. However, Next just bundles a lot of functionality, uh, gives you routing out of the box. Uh, it helps you, so it does page-based routing. You don't need to create this you know, React router, for example. And it's just uh, super quick. It gives you a server-side rendering out of the box. Uh, it gives you um, incremental static refresh, which means you know you basically as many people as you know coming to your page, it will just you know give you a static page if you have some content on there like you know usernames or stuff like that. So it gives you all of this out of the box, and you really just you build your pages as if you're thinking in terms of a web website. That's so cool. And uh, I think people have detected a German accent. Uh, <laughs> is that correct? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I love it. Also from Karl Lagerfeld. Yeah, I love it. Um, <laughs> Let's not mention the football. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm German. Um, I'm glad people picked that up. I'm, I'm trying to hide that as much as possible. But of course, you know, I can't have that beautiful British accent that you have. <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> Well, I'm in Portugal at the moment. So I'm hoping, well, I'm not hoping, but maybe the accident will slowly go over time. But thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. So I'm super excited to get started. Right. Let me share my screen. And I have um, shared uh, Mark's um, GitHub in the chat. Do give Mark a follow uh, on GitHub and see the awesome, exciting things uh, Mark is up to. Team Germany. <laughs> A funny side note, while we're on my profile, I sure. the last year, um, because I, I see you always push, you know, like, let's get those greens. Um, last year, I, I made it my goal um, to basically make at least one commit every day. Um, and that's sort of also reflected in my, in my, you know, GitHub contributions list. This year was a bit more lazy. I, I managed until, you know, mid-March. And then I, you know, I had just too much other work to do. <laughs> Uh, off of GitHub, unfortunately, but um, it was a really nice challenge, and I encourage everyone um, to 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 think about it this way. And it's it's not for recruiting or anything like that. It's just 
you feel really good when you, you know, if you love coding, uh, and I think everyone in your community really loves it or wants to get into it. And you feel really good if you, you know you can make at least one contribution or one commit uh, per day, and then you start venturing out, adding to other repositories and, and giving back to other um, repos besides your own. And, and I think that's the really rewarding part. And you feel much more confident about how to commit and, and what to do. And um, yeah, I experienced that last year and it was really fun. Awesome. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, work or family gets in the way and so forth, not gets in the way, but is, you know, prior priority. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's good that you did it every day, but it's not a necessity to do it every, every day at all. Um, of course, of course. It, but it is, it is nice. You get to geek out with so many people. I geek out with Carl loads. Carl's been working on our API and using, uh, data stacks, Astra DB as well. Nice. And, uh, yeah, learning, I'm learning a lot from Carl on uh, Nest with an S and so Nest.js as well. Um, I was going to say, so we have a question. Uh, are there any prerequisites for Next.js other than React? Um, Ayushi, I hope not because I haven't come prepared and I'm gonna, we're going to try and build a full stack uh, CRUD application and store the data and persist it and bring it out. So let's see. Um, so I don't think there are any. I think you just need Node yeah. installed and that's probably it and you're good to, good to go. Yeah, so pretty much if you if you know how to use create create React app, that's basically a pre-bundled NPM package that um, basically sets up your React infrastructure for you. Um, if you know how to use that, you also know how to use Next because Next has basically a pendant to that. It's called create Next app. Very innovative naming, but um, yeah, it's it's super helpful and super easy to get started. So no prerequisites. If you know React, um, it will be like riding a bike for you. Okay, I don't know React, so I hope it's still pretty pretty easy. Let's see how we do. We do have Codepilot, um, and we're going to start right from the beginning. We're going to create a repo. We're going to push up code as we go along. We're going to have you all create issues and so forth. So it's going to be going to be quite quite interesting. Um, so uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do it. Oh, wait a second. Question from Carl, and this is something I've been debating. And I'm going to go with Mark's suggestion on this. I'm really hoping you're going to use Next TypeScript template. Um, I think we're going to follow the docs and see what they do vanilla. I think that's what most people will do. Um, Mark, what's your thinking on this? So while I love TypeScript, um, I think for a you know a simple project uh if you i don't know if you're working by yourself or you know with a just a handful of people um maybe one other person or two other people um getting started with with just plain javascript um instead of typescript is just faster and easier and you know given the time that we have um i think it um having to type everything <laughs> all our responses will like you know Eddie and I will be struggling here, and <laughs> it's like there's an arrow. We we forgot a type. Um, but I, I I do love uh, I do love the TypeScript, and and Next makes it very easy to uh, include types as well. Um, okay, awesome. Yeah. Let's get let's get let's jump in and get started. So I have a terminal up here, all ready to go. Should be hopefully big enough for everyone to see. Um, what you're thinking when we create the the app? Should I use this example from their documentation? Or is there another? This is this the the next learner learn starter. Is there another one that we should use? What do you think? So what I what I typically like to use to get started, um, because next is also you know focused on front end. Um, what I like to use is um, I like to build my applications with like Tailwind in the in the front end. Okay. So Tailwind is a CSS framework. Um, that basically creates um, utility style um, tags for for you know doing yeah exactly for doing um, it is very very cool I do like using Tailwind I haven't used it in a while but it is very very cool but it's it's very simple like it's it's you you get what you see basically um, and they have a very nice uh, next JS uh example I, i'll drop that in the in the chat here that you can bring it up please um, do it might youtube might remove it so you might have to uh, right. drop it to dm on twitter to me okay 
and then I can share it. Try it, but I th have a feeling it might. I'll just share it here on Twitter. Let me bring, you can up, bring it up there. Williams. So uh, we have some questions. Tailwind is awesome. Yes, it is. It's very cool. And a question about Bootstrap. We were talking about this. Um, it's another <laughs> alternative. It's a bit. It's very different. Um, it is. It is a different different way of doing things. I think. So um, until I think until the beginning of the year, I did everything with with Bootstrap. Um, it was my go to uh, CSS. Um, um, okay. Yeah. It was always always there for me. It was very good to me. Um, <laughs> I really like Tailwind because it's, you know, you would just manipulate everything you need inside your HTML file, basically. So you don't really need a separate CS, uh, CSS style sheet file. Okay. Um, and that's, that's the really nice thing about it. Um, okay. So you can just start from the top. There's like this NPM, NPX. Um, it's the first one. Create next app minus E with Tailwind CSS and my project. I probably won't call it my project. Let's call right. it uh, Next.js. And we're going to make a members list. Actually, should we talk about what plan is today? Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we can create a repo and get people start creating um, issues to get some green squares. So this is my, my GitHub. Let me create a new, um, new repository. We will call it Next.js. I think we're going to make a members list. So let's do this. Let's call it Next.js members. Nice. Um, and I can always rename it later. So we'll just say list, uh, list members, um, oh, list members. Um, and we'll see. I want to do search. I want to do some other things. But let's see how we get on with time. I want to add a, not going to add anything actually. We'll just leave it as it is. So let's just create the repository. Yeah. So now we've got the repository. I'm going to share that in the chat. So therefore people can start creating issues, but just not, not yet. Well, whole fire, everyone. Um, <laughs> let's just see, let's just see the plan. Then we'll create issues together and get you get the green squares. Um, so let's see. Uh, yes. So um, yes, as always, there's someone who's asking Safari dark mode. Yes. Safari. Cause I'm logged into everything on Safari. I develop in Chrome and no dark mode because it's shit on a live stream. So that's why, but thank you very much. I'm still cool. Don't worry about it. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, so I've got, I've cloned this. Let me cr actually, I haven't cloned it. Sorry. I've created it. Let me do what you were suggesting, which is create the project now. And we've got Next.js members. Let's create it. Okay. Downloading some files with Tailwind. Let's see. Let's get this going. I haven't done this before. So it's, it's going to download everything. It's not going to be cached at all. Okay, so that's been created. So if I list it, we can see it says Next.js members, and it's given some examples, npm run dev, run build, start, and so forth. So let's go into that as it suggested. And can I run npm run dev? Should we see how it looks like? Yeah, bring it up. npm run dev. Look, and let me bring up, I'm guessing it's running on 3000, it is. Let me bring Chrome over here. We've got to make sure that uh, <laughs> Sumit is happy as well. Satisfying uh, everyone, yeah. <laughs> exactly, okay, so that looks promising. That looks good. So it's basically, that's the, the starting page um, of Next. Uh, it's Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got working. everything you need. So that's good. I will leave this. Uh, let me stop that for a moment and prove to everyone it's working. I'll refresh the page and it will die. What I'll do is I'll open VS Code as well so we can get Copilot helping me very, very quickly. Nice. Um, so we've got this. This is what got created. Let me make it a bit bigger for everybody. Yeah, and so now you already see that there's, you know, you've got obviously your package JSON file. Um, then you've got a public folder which is all the things that you would imagine lives in a public folder, such as, you know, your favicons. You could put images in here, um, mm -hmm. like the Vercel SVG icon that lives on the bottom of the page. Um, you've got pages, which is what I mentioned in the beginning. It's this um, page-based routing. So if you, so you have the index, um, which defaults to the, the sort of like the home page, um, so, and then you have the underscore app page, um, page, which is sort of your scaffolding for, or the initializer. Uh, this is really where 
the components get loaded in. So you can put a bunch of stuff that you want by default on every page you can put in this page. Um, the index.js, for example, if you click on that, um, it will show you basically the HTML code or the JSX code that we just saw um, okay. on, the, on the page. And then you've also got this really cool thing. It's an API folder. And everything that lives in the API folder is actually a will turn into a serverless API once you deploy it. Um, so you can, oh, you know, yeah. in this case, it's got this like hello API. And if you actually go, you know, if you if you run it and Let's you go it. to yeah, run it, and then you go to localhost three thousand slash API slash hello. It will it should output a two hundred with John Doe. Perfect. Okay. So one thing I'm going to do quickly, it says, welcome to Next.js. I'm just going to change something there before we test the API out um, to, to show everybody that it is working. So welcome to Next.js. Welcome to Eddie Hub. I want to save that, go back to this. It's already refreshed it, which is great. So it shows that it's real. And as Mark was saying, if we go to forward slash API, did you say, then forward slash hello? hello. Was it? Yeah. Perfect. We have some uh yeah some data that's coming through that's what it what it said in the hello.js that's awesome. right so you basically have your own api server built within uh, next.js and it's also route based so you know you do stuff like authentication logins all this you would put into the api folder and it's it's really you know helpful if you want to call that from within the application um, because it's just it's serverless, um, it's a serverless function, and it's super fast and super helpful as well. And then, uh, very specific to Tailwind, you've got this like post CSS uh, config JS and the Tailwind config JS in the root and the root of the folder. And these are you know just uh, very specific to Tailwind. Um, Tailwind comes with dark mode, of course, if we want to enable <laughs> that, you know, but we're not going to go into that today, probably. Yeah, we'll uh, keep it keep it simple for today. Yeah, um, but it's very nice. In the index okay. JS, you can actually see already the, the utility classes. So in the class name, you see flex, flex call, item center, um, or text 6XL, for example. These are all um, Tailwind utility classes, um, which all have a, you know, functionality MT dash three, for example, means margin top, and then uh, three is a basically a unit. And if you hover over it, I think there's also some IntelliSense. Yeah. Oh yeah, there is nice. So if you if you ever don't know what it actually means, um, out of the box in VS Code, if you install it like that, you've got this IntelliSense, um, which is very nice. Awesome. Okay, so now we've got it running, and we, and we kind of know roughly how it works. We're going to dig a bit deeper. Maybe we should create some some issues. Maybe I should commit what I've got as well. So what I want to do is I want to leave that open. I'm going to open a new terminal. No, I don't want to update yet just yet. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to do a get status, um, and it says we've changed that. Okay, so because I put Eddie Hub on it, so I'm going to do a commit. I'm just going to say. Uh, uh, feature renamed to Eddie Hub. Commit that, and then I, I can't push it because I haven't got the remote on the repo yet. So if I did uh, git remote minus v, you can see I've got no remote. So we're going to do a git remote, and we're going to add origin, which is the URL I just copied from uh, the repo. Now if I do git remote minus v, got that. So actually now I can do a push. If I do git push, origin main and type in my password it's always the same one two three or just password one I've got a few <laughs> no, just kidding and if i refresh this we should see now all the code I had locally has now been pushed up to this repo so you can all follow along so let me share this link i can't remember if i shared it already um, but this is the repo we're going to be working with uh, repo for today's live stream here we go I'm sharing that now, and then we can start creating some issues as well. This is how you can get your green squares easily, too. And we do have a question, uh, Mark. Uh, yeah. The question is, can we use static build with API in Next.js? 
Yeah, um, I also just saw the question. I wanted to hint at. Um, yes, so we can we we can basically fetch the data that we get from an API, and basically there is this, this thing called incremental incremental uh, static regeneration. ISR, very long word, very complex English terms there, <laughs> um, but it's it, it basically means exactly this. So you you load in your data initially, and that can come from an external API or an internal API, and you if the you know a second visitor um, goes on that page, he will get that cached file that's cached at the edge, um, and and then yeah, it's basically um static uh, also statically built api um so yeah awesome cool okay also, so sorry go on yeah there's also a question from carl i think oh i missed um, it regarding whether i'm used whether i have used uh, data stacks astra um i will get into that very soon i have uh not used it yet uh, but it looks very fun and very cool, um, and so I'm I'm also very excited to to use it in this project. So I'll share a link for that if anyone uh, wants to to sign up for free. Here is the link as well to sign up to DataStacks Astra. We will get to it in a moment. It is basically a cloud database that you can use via REST. You can use via um, GraphQL. You can use via Document API, just using the SDK, which we'll show you in a moment, which we use today. Um, so just to quickly give a bit of a background on that, all you need to do is get your credentials from um, logging in with your GitHub account into uh, DataStacks. Uh, in the link I shared in the chat, and then you can um, you create a namespace, so you can have like different namespaces, production, dev, whatever you want, and you have different collections. They're like tables, and then you can either get data, or if you want to create data, you literally just pass in your JavaScript object, and you can um, you can pass it in, and then you can do finds on it. You can do searches, and we're gonna have a play with that in a bit. So yes, um, okay. Cool. Uh, all right. So next, let's get some people some green squares as, as a good place to start. But I'm going to open a quick um, a new window, and I'm just going to say, uh, I think some of the issues we need. So we need to get, if someone can create this issue first, which is uh, create a new next AS app. So if I can raise that issue, and I'm working close that because we've done that, if someone can do that. And I think after that, what we could probably do is we've created that we've pushed it to github we should probably maybe just get kind of the the ui looking not necessarily great but looking <laughs> like the data that we want so um basic ui with data we want and this would be i think for now we'd have someone's name we'll take someone's github and we'll take someone's location i think three three fields Perfect. would be good and then after that, we should probably um, uh, connect uh, data stacks. And I know Carl's a lot better at me than this, so we might have to uh, ask Carl for some help. I'm sure we can figure it out between us. Uh, connect, or maybe we just rather than connect data stacks, maybe just save data. So if we save data to data stacks, yeah. Um, and then the UI will have hard coded data in it. So then it will probably be read data from data stacks and display in the UI. Perfect. And we can commit these as we go along as well, and I'll commit them against the issues. Uh, and then after that, that's our goal. If we've got and our stretch goals, I think would be, you know, maybe make the, make the UI look a bit better, really perfect. If we get time, we'll see how we get on. We're already half an hour in. And then if we get more time, which I'd love to do is get um, GitHub data. And then, for example, e.g., um, the GitHub profile, GitHub profile image, and something like that. But we'll see what ideas people have and, and, and see uh, how, it, uh, how it goes. So Perfect. hopefully we got some... Um, Issues being created. Anyone want any green squares? I see no takers in the chat. So no one wants any green squares. Okay, that's interesting. Well, I can always create them if no one else wants them. I can always do with green squares. I'll do the first one. 
create a new Next.js app. So I'll create that one and someone else can do the next one. Create Next.js. Create and lo and behold, I'm gonna close it straight away because we've done it. I should have stunned on my commit against this one. We'll do it, we'll do it next. Okay, while people are creating those, um, <coughs> what so next on our list was I've really forgotten basic UI. So if you can, if Mark, if you can explain to us how we can start, how we should customize the UI and how will we do it? Will we have it so there's um, on, on the landing page that we're on now, do we want it so, uh, not this one, uh, <laughs> this one, do we want it that um, we have the list and then if we want to add one, do we want the form above the list or do we want it on a second page? What, what would you recommend? Um, we could add it on the, the form on the same page, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so let's. Should we, should we create a list at the moment? Yeah. A hard coded list of information. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm guessing index.js. Let me read yeah. wider. Okay. So we basically want to start somewhere we load this like welcome to, and there's this like get started by editing this page, like this p tag, like paragraph tag. Okay, should I ditch this one and we start from here? Yeah. Should good. I ditch everything else below it as well? Um, what do we have below here? We have a lot of links. We have the footer in there. We can leave the footer, I suppose, right? Yeah, let's leave the footer and then we can change the footer. So everything between main and... Hopefully I'm keeping deleting the right ones. I think that's correct. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If I save that, we should see the page reload. Welcome to Eddie Hub. Perfect. Awesome. Um, okay, I think that looks good. I deleted the right amount of code, which is great. And actually, Carl has asked a really good question. I know we're in the middle of coding. And I don't want to kind of drake away from questions, but Mark and me discussed this just before the live stream. Um, uh, Next.js actually has a .m file, and mm -hmm. therefore the credentials are only available in the node side, in the API side. You okay. can change a flag or do something to make it available in the front end, but obviously most of the time that is not recommended unless it's some config that isn't private. Is that correct? Yeah, so that's, a, that's yeah, that's exactly right. Um, there's basically two ways you can add um, environment credentials and they would really depend on whether you want to use them on the server part of the, the application. So in our case, data stacks credentials would go on the server side. We don't want to expose them to the browser and to everyone else in the browser. However, for things like, let me, let me think, for things like um, analytics, yes? So analytics, there's something that lives on the, on the browser side because on the client side, um, and there you can basically prefix the, the credentials um, with a next app underscore. So something like that. Um, and then and then your credential name. And that would then be next would automatically understand that this is has to should be exposed to the to the front end uh, to the client side and expose that respectively. Yeah. Okay, cool. Great question though. Yeah, it's really important. You don't want to have your things private on the on the client side. Um, so yeah, good good question. Okay, actually, it's I made a mistake. It's not next app. It used to be next app. It's next public now, and then um, credential. I will okay. just update that in the comments. Nice. Me uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to log into data, data stacks. Oh. It did not like your capitals. <laughs> um, uh, you can uh, pr private chat it to me and I will, um, let me just log into Datastacks while you're doing that. Sign up with GitHub. Look at that. One click sign in. It's freaking awesome. <laughs> Love it. I wish more places did that. Um, okay, cool. So we'll come back to that in a moment. Let me uh, go back to what we were doing. Okay, so what we had is welcome to Eddie Hub, and then next up, we were gonna create a list. 
So let's we can just test out Codepilot and see what it what it does. I suppose so outside the H1, I'm guessing probably a good place to do this. We could create a list. What is it? Or can we put a comment in? I don't think in HTML it was very good with comments. It's auto completing that, but that's about it. Okay, Codepilot is not doing as as much as I thought. So I guess this is a list, right? I could just do yeah. member one. Duplicate yeah. it, member two, and then member three. And if we look at that, it should display it. It's going to be ugly, yeah. But it's it's going to work. Unstyled, but still, it works. Yeah. And do you know off the top of your head any styles we could use that are simple, not to make this perfect, but just to make it look a little bit nicer and to show a bit of tailwind? Yeah. So for one, we can yeah class name, and then. And then you want to put maybe make it a flex and flex wrap. I'll just put that in here and flex before that um, so that it understands. Okay. Okay. And then so we're wrapping basically all of these in a in a flex. Okay. And then you what else? Really? So you wrote M two as well, I think. Yeah, M2 is just uh, so minus M2 basically gives you a, a margin, a negative margin before ah. each of the next things. Um, oh, yeah. okay. It's quite useful. Should and then. Okay. Yeah, sorry, carry on. Yeah. And so this is the list. And if you want me to do live code share, let me know. I can We can do that. And so therefore. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, let's um, let's set that up. Let's do that. Okay, let me make it a bit smaller for a moment. See all my menu items down the side, and live code share, live share, share. Oh, I need to sign in. Okay, allow. <laughs> it obviously expired. Continue. Allow. Open. There we go. I think that's going to work. Signing in. Perfect. And it's starting a session. I should get a link to share with you. Now, hopefully no one else sees the link. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll be joining our session. Okay, hopefully no one saw it in that time, but that's fine. And I'll just uh, send you a private chat with that link. All right. Oh, um, we have a point. I've written, okay, it says cl I've written class, uh, which we wouldn't normally do in HTML, but... Uh, uh, yeah. Sassy, if I pronounce it right, it says class name, which I think is correct. Right. Looking at the other examples, is that a, is that a right. React? Is that a React thing? That's yeah, that's a React thing, unfortunately. <laughs> um, because class is basically the initializer, so um, because you're writing JSX, so there is already a class, and it, it would just confuse the whole thing. Okay. And uh, so thank you very much, uh, Sashi, for noticing that bug. And uh, Todd says, uh, if we'd use Bootstrap, it would be done um, already. So uh, yeah, Bootstrap is a bit faster, I suppose less flexible. For this example, I'm taking Mark's lead, whatever Mark's more comfortable with, um, we, can, we can do it. There are also examples on, um, a Tailwind does have um, some really good, really good examples, I think. Where, is, where have I seen that before? Uh, like, uh, not in the page section, but elements, they do have some great examples. So there's actually one really, so there's tailwindui.com, which is unfortunately, um, they only have a few like free templates. Okay. Um, so tailwindui.com, yeah. Um, and you can see like the first one of each of these examples are basically if you click on the code, it should be free, um, or is that? Uh, yes, yeah, so this one was. So I, what I did was I picked one. These have got padlocks, I noticed. Yeah. Um, and then this one it hasn't. So we could have a look, um, and it gives you gives you an example of what you can do. Um, but it's probably overkill for what what we need um, <laughs> here. So um, yeah, what's what's also great is uh, there's also a free resource. Uh, maybe you can share that. Also, it's called tailblocks.cc. Tailblocks.cc, and it's got very nice 
um, examples. Oh, wow. Cool. Um, there's also like one under team, I think. So like very much at the bottom. Um, yeah, team. And then, yeah, that one. So that looks kind of cool. Well, that's very cool. It's it's you know it's got even that you know our future our our stretch goal of the of the picture yes. in here. <laughs> okay, well maybe we can leave this open and we'll we'll come and uh, and come and use this. Yeah. When we get to that. Okay. Awesome. Well, actually, you know what? We could probably just use it in now and leave the image you know kind of blank. As in, yeah. Can you get the, can you get the code for this? Right. Um, I think you need to accept me to join this session. Oh, um, sorry, my bad. Still pending on my end. Uh, contacts. Suggestion, Eddie. No, I'm going to invite myself. Uh, <laughs> sense. Uh, no, I'm signed in already. Why don't I see it? Uh, Let me try this again. Yeah, maybe just try it again. I'll pay attention this time. All right. Video joining collaboration session, opening remote session. Oh, there session. we go. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm in came up this time okay perfect you're here awesome all right yeah let me grab that code um it's quite a bit but it's it looks very nice and yeah we're here let me just okay yeah update it and drop this in here um, for some reason i don't have i don't have prettier installed in here otherwise so but it would automatically style very nicely all right um there's there's always this it's also a react thing yes that images for example don't have a a closing tag like in html and but react requires it so i will just grab all the images and <laughs> And it, how, how, do I do this? how do I jump at the end of the line again? Is it? Uh, I, I use command right. Oh, OK. Yeah, uh, for me, it's control, control E. All right. Okay, you. I think that looks better. It actually, it's, it's actually very interesting because it does, um, it does compile properly if you don't use class name. It does give you an error in the browser, though that okay. oh, you should be using class. So if you, we've already right. got it, already got live. Uh, we, yes, we have got an error here. Uh, yeah, class, okay. Did you mean yeah. class name? Okay, yeah. so we should do a search and replace. Yeah, yeah, we can that. do that. There we go. Good old search and replace. Nice. Okay, save and now the error is gone. Yep, the error is gone. Yeah. All looks good. Nice. Very nice. Okay, perfect. We're going to start adding people uh, to this shortly as well. Right, okay. Um, so we've got a list. I think that's pretty pretty good, different different people. And so now we've got the UI. So next on our list, how is uh, everyone? No one's created any issues yet, have they? Let me go check. Go back to the project. Oh, no, don't do any fancy stuff, Mac. Still no issues created. Okay, I'm going to create these real quick. If no one wants any green squares. I will do them. So the second was basic UI, which we've just completed. Um, I think we had, uh, we, will, we will change the, the job title to be, um, to be the location. I will also do one. So you're going to create an issue. Okay, cool. Um, I will do number two. Do you want to do number uh, three? Yes. So basic UI, create that. Another green square for me. No one else wants any green squares. And then actually, we do probably need another one. Um, we probably need um, save the data. We need a form for the UI as well. So I might mm -hmm. put, um, uh, form on numbers don't matter too much. But uh, so uh, you did save the data to data stacks. OK, so I will do um, the form then as well. And you want right. to do number five, the read data? Yeah. Read data from data stacks and display in the UI. Awesome. So now we should have our list it's coming together. These are the things that we're gonna gonna work through. And if you're not following Mark, everyone, uh, I'm gonna drop 
uh, Mark's GitHub link in the chat. Do give Mark a follow on GitHub. Okay, so refresh this. We've got four now. Brilliant. Okay, I think we've got things that we need for our main main goals. Okay, next up. So we got this. So the next step was basic UI with the data we wanted. Okay, I'm going to give that. I should commit that, and then um, I can put it against that issue. So if I do a status, with that file has changed. The, we're going to use conventional commit log, commit messages um, as well style. So number two, so I can say git commit. We're going to say it's a feature, and we're going to say it was... Um, UI for list, yeah. Number two, commit. And if I push that up, oh, I felt push wrong. Origin and then to main, then it should appear under the issue as well. So refresh this, we can see it appears under here as well. I'm going to give that issue a close. Perfect. We're good. And then next, we were going to, um, actually, maybe we should shuffle these around a bit. We were going to, I think the next one up was, we'll do not form then, actually. Let's do, hmm. we need to get data into the database before we can read it out. So maybe we do need to do the form next, and then we do need to save it and then read it. So it is in the correct order. Okay, so let's do the form next. So this yeah. is going to be number four. Um, okay, so how do we how do we do a form? Um, so there is actually also a very nice block. Okay, um, nice. from Tailwinds. Let's grab that. Um, let me just see. Let me just push something in here. Uh, we wanted to do it above, yes. I think above, yes. So it doesn't change with the with the length. Let's look at the code and see what you're up to. Here we go. Okay. Make it a bit bigger for everybody. Yeah, I've got to. Hopefully, everyone is still following along. So, who is, actually, who is actually following? A, a, not allow along. I can't write it. Do. Let me delete my message. <laughs> instance, remove. Um, so we've got the. We don't need these buttons at the bottom. So this we can delete. Um, can you go to the um, local host to your Safari? See how it looks. If yeah, uh, there should be still some error. I think there is a yeah an error here. Okay, it's good. Um, can I well, amend it? I think you missed. Why well, does it look it different looks, from yours? Yeah, it looks different from mine. <laughs> oh, that happens sometimes. That is weird. I'm guessing you wanted to do that. Okay. Uh, let me, yeah, let me the, zoom out a little bit and see what it is. Okay, I don't think we need this div here. Uh, make no, that up. looks better. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Save. Okay. Um, should be... Save. Oh. Okay. Uh, so we've got this like massive image here. I think we don't. We can remove yeah, that. We don't need the image. Okay. Let's have a look. It's this part here. That's the image. Can just remove that. Aha, that looks better. Looks cleaner, yeah. Okay, so we're going to need a couple more fields, though. So we're going to take name, GitHub username, and location. So three fields we'll need. Mm -hmm. So we can duplicate. They can go under each other, I guess. I know the button is to the right. Yeah. Um, so we could put the button below, I guess. I'm thinking whether, because this is like for a single, maybe someone from the, from the community has like a better suggestion for form. Um, there's actually a better form here. Um, let's, sorry about that. Let's, no let's worries. write something new. Okay, you carry on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna address the chat. So yeah. uh, Ander gives us a thumbs up. So they're still following along. Awesome. Um, uh, are people following along actually coding it? Have you, has anyone created a Next.js app and following along that way? I'd be interested to know. And then we've got Todd saying, getting the impression CodePilot is great for JS. I think, yeah, CodePilot is um, 
it seems better for javascript and, and those sort of things. html i haven't had that much luck with it but i think as more people use it it's gonna gonna get better um but yeah with html i don't think it's been great javascript php python ruby c plus i think for all that sort of stuff it's really good at um but not for html right oh another great uh uh, will we create components from the snippets for later? Yes, I suppose we could create components and then yeah, have absolutely. the repetition. So that's another issue we should have actually raised. Um, who yeah. needs a green square for today? If not, I can create it and say um, member component. So therefore, we only have one and we loop over it. Member component. Okay, uh, create that. Sorry, Carl, did you want to create that? I was just trying to save time and create it so I don't forget. Um, no uh, okay. Okay, so you've got this. Okay, that looks, that looks better. Absolutely. Um, as in, you've got two form fields that vertically, so we can change that. That's good. And we can code it at the same time, right? So I can change some of this text down here. Yeah. That says our team. I'm just going to rename that to be our members. And I'll yeah. probably. This. Okay. Let you carry on with the form. I'm looking forward to see how we do the components later on as well. We could probably do that when we retrieve the data, actually. That'd be important to do that. So um, we could do it here probably so if like four maybe five loop over component hard coded data hard coded data in uh, the api then we can replace it mark is just changing all the names to match up for location github username and so forth which makes sense all right Cool. Okay, everyone, don't forget, give the video a thumbs up. It really helps support the channel. And I know you've all subscribed already, so I'm not going to ask you to do that. Cool. I, I want to save it and take a peek, but I don't want to break it mid. No. Save it, let's do it. Save from my end. Okay, cool. The save. Look. Looks good. So we've got a sign up. That's that's fine. Which is kind of like a sign up. Um, we've got a member. Yeah, we can change that afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we do have one error. Uh, invalid. Oh, we got a class somewhere. Okay. You you do your replace and search I'll, and replace I'll, again. I'll do the magic. Yeah, no problem. Let's do this. It's already saved it from last time. Okay, perfect. Refresh. HTML four. Four, okay, it doesn't like a four, where is that? Ah, oh, okay, yeah, so it's, it's this label, oh, I guess. Label. Okay, so how do you do it. that in uh, in React for JSX? Like HTML4, maybe? Like, um, so there is... Because uh... I guess... Yeah. Um... Similar to like the suggestion. So just... HTML and then a capital F and then OR. Okay, I'm just gonna make another stretch goal suggested by Naris. Uh, testing, if the time allows, I would prefer to use um, Cypress for end-to-end -end testing, but also unit is also important as well. But I don't know if time allows, we've been going for almost an hour already. <laughs> um, nice. Okay, so what am I changing with the fours to? Um, so HTML, like in all, small caps, and then okay. capital F. Oh, you like that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know. And people will say, Eddie, why don't you like React? It's because of stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> like, seriously, come on. It's going to have this issue with Angular. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, this is very specific to, to React. Um, very yeah. Weird, but all right, we'll, we'll deal with it. Oh, and for name as well. Uh, uh, Narish is saying for name. I don't know what that's for. 
Okay, we'll keep moving on. We'll we'll check that in a second. So next yeah. up, we have um, we were doing uh, the go back to the issue list form web page. So we've got that. So we've got that. Let me save this. Whilst yeah. we can follow along. So if I commit, we have a feature and um, form to add members, and that was ticket number four. There we go. And if I commit that and push that up, people can see what is going on and follow mm -hmm. along as well. Up. Awesome. And then let me go into that and close it. And you'll see that there'll be um, a commit against it already. Perfect. Going to close that. Nice. If anyone wants to get a green square, do raise an issue for testing as suggested. Um, there will be, um, you'll get a green square as well repo link if anyone needs it okay so next up we should probably do what i'm thinking is let's remove some of these so we could save data we've got a couple of options i think we could either save data to data stack from the form or mm -hmm. we could create move it to a component and loop over hard-coded data so i think we could do four or five which one do you prefer to do next mark Let's do five first. Um, okay. Yeah. It will make the sure there's less code on the page, I suppose, because all these exactly. are... And then once, once we've got the data, we can easily just substitute it. Exactly. So can I delete all the ones that are repeated now? Is that allowed? Can I delete all of these? Yeah. So I think we just want... This will move to a component, if that is my understanding. Is if it's anything so, like Angular. Yeah, so this is the first one. So this is the, the title. So uh, And then we need one oh, more. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. That's the title. You're right. We need this one, which yeah, this will one is, be... Uh, so from the P-2, yeah. I think yeah, it's, we exactly. want to keep that so I can delete from here, I think. That's right. Uh, which... Let me do it the other way, I'm backwards, so I can delete from that one yeah. up to this one, I think. Yeah, I think that's okay, looks happy. So if I save that, which is one that's on good. the page, it's a bit squished, but that's fine. Is that because I've broken it or because it's just it was expecting multiples, probably because it's expecting multiples. Let's have a look. We'll, we'll put data in. A hard coded yeah. data in and see. So, if I want to move that to a component, what do I need to do? Do next. Um, so, in the root directory, we want to create a component, a components file uh, folder. Okay, so not under pages in the root directory. Okay, that's right. Components. Yeah. Okay. All right, and now name the component. Uh, create a new component. Uh, should we just oh, not? Uh, a folder or file? A file. File, okay. So, so I'll just say member. Member.js, uh, yeah. JSX or JS? Uh, JS. It, in the okay. end, it doesn't matter uh, okay. anymore. Right. And now we want to drop in our component here. Um, okay. So would I... It would be... Uh, what's going to be repeated? It's going to be... Um, that's the wrapper. Yeah. I think it's so, this one, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. So I paste that in like so, and then I format it. Yeah. Oh, I have nothing configured. Uh, okay, hopefully that's okay. Oh, nice. Perfect. And so we can, let me just take over here a bit. Yeah, um, you drive. Um, member. And so, aha, so because they do the reactify stuff, that's right. So, okay, but there is an issue here. Let me see, what does it not like? Doesn't like expected semicolon. Maybe I've also I'm... got an error up here as well. Expect it. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I can just do it like this. 
but fixes it. Okay. Okay, it seems happier now. Right. So this is function and where where you said you got also an error. Oh no, it's gone now. You fixed it. Oh uh, yeah, it was the same error. Okay. Yeah. So now our member component is exposed and we can jump back to the index. Okay. Import it at the very top. So okay, and I can probably delete that as well. Yeah, and you can oh, already I'm... put in the like JSX version. So those those. I'll let I'll let you drive. I don't know the uh, the React stuff of how okay. to uh, include it. Let me follow you as well. One second. Uh... Oh, it's I can follow you manually. Okay, so it's just like that. Okay, just like member. Just like that, but of course we need it at the very top first. Okay. Um, member from and then. Oh, nice. Suggested already. Component oh. member. So okay. that's it. And now it should at least so it should not I... have changed anything. In okay, that's true. So if I save that. Um okay, on save it, it does formatting for me. So let's have a look. Yeah, it looks the same. And it so instead, like, can I duplicate that like a few times? Yeah. Should yeah, it's okay. It's looking nicer now. Thanks, Todd, for your help. Todd's helping in the chat as well. Very nice. Thanks, Todd. Uh, okay, cool. So we've got six, so that's great. So that works, and I can then delete those. So now we've done the components part as suggested uh, by Carl. So thank you very much for that, Carl. So let me do the room to close. Let me commit that okay, mm -hmm. again so people can, can follow along. Add those files. You can see we've got two. If I do a commit and say uh, feature component, and that was for issue six. That I'll push that straight up now. Perfect. Oh, cut my password in wrong. Password one two three. Extra secure, obviously. Password. If I pin code. Um, okay, so now that will have some code attached to that issue. I can close that. So next up, we probably, I might make a suggestion here, which is um, if we should, if we could, these six here, I'm jumping ahead. Maybe we should save data first, but I was going to suggest, could we remove that six and just have one? and loop over it and hard code the data in the API. So therefore we've kind of got it almost end-to-end -end working. Does that mm -hmm. sound okay? Yeah. yeah. I just I just feel that's like a, a kind of joining things up, which I feel more comfortable about. So let me create an issue. Let me say um, uh, loop over hard, loop over um, more comfortable with that so um what we would what i can do now is i can just i suppose uh this would be an array so let me just convert this to an array um that and then we're going to have name and then we're going to have github oh i see it's auto completing for us okay nice. thank you john though i'll john though i'll take that and twitter it's auto completed now i don't want twitter this time i want location um and they can just be in london then can I duplicate this a, a few times? We had six, so let's go back to having six. So we could have um, John, we got Jane, Emma, Brett, they've all got the same surname, but it's fine, all family members, um, Martha, I think of a name, Bob. They're all in London, um, and that should all work. So if I just save that. Yeah. Okay, so how can we get this list, if I delete all that and just have one reading from the API. Yeah, so basically we want to... <laughs> uh, we've got a suggestion, ng4. <laughs> I think that's for Angular. I don't know React, I know Angular, but it's definitely an Angular thing. <laughs> Very nice. Um, yeah, just hang on a moment. I'll get started so we want to pull in the the data basically um, so what we want to create is let's just do it like this want to fetch oh. the data 
okay so i was i see sorry you, you passed me some messages html4 okay so um yeah, so you can drive. You you drive. It might be easier rather than telling me. Um, that's right. What to I will, do, I will so. jump in. Yeah. So we're still in here. Okay. It would actually be nice if we just did a. Let me let me do another component. I think I can just do another component. Um, okay. Remember list JS. Okay. Um, to pop up on the left. And. Yep. It has. Great. Um, what I'll do here is let me just pull up something. No worries, you carry on. Uh, Todd, um, thanks. Yes, uh, GitHub is so much better than Jira. I actually don't choose any client projects that work with Jira. I have, for years, I've avoided it. Um, but yeah, GitHub issues is awesome. And we could, we could have even used a project board. We've even created a project board. And we could say MVP. And oh, I should have chosen a template, but it's not a problem. I can say um, we've got our to dos, and then we've got our uh, in progress, and we've got our done. And then in the to dos, we can add stuff from our the issues that we had. So this is, this is much better than um, Jira. Here is a swear word, you can't mention that here. So um, this is the order. So we'll do testing frame, it will be last. Um, we'll probably save data next, and that's in, so this is in uh, in progress. There we go. That's what we've got on at the moment. You use Jira at work. Oh no, Carl, it's time to change jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hard. I uh, we also used Jira before. Um, did not like that. Yeah. Um, okay, so let me open see what you're up to in members list. Here we go. So what's SWR? And so you got member. That's the one we created. The component we created before. Yeah. So, okay. Um, what I basically want to do SWR is um, it's it's also built by Vercel and um, it's basically it says it's it stands for stale while um, stale while rehydrate. Um, is that is that the thing? S stale while revalidate. Okay, um, it's basically it caches data um, on the endpoint and only gets new data if it's um, if there's like an update or revalidation fetch request. Um, so that's uh, kind of nice. We that's it's actually an npm um, module. Um, some npm component, so we'll also install that, and then we've got, of course, our like typical fetch request. Um, there's basically. Let me just add this down here. Um, no worries. While you're doing that, I'm going to address um, Todd's message. Major worries for Jira, absolutely. Especially this is just the basic one on the Eddie Hub. Um, if I go to Eddie Hub org. This is the API that um, Carl is working on. Yeah. And uh, if you go to the project board, we have new project boards. And this is going to like, like mind blowing is going to destroy anything out of the water. So if I kind of show some examples, I want a screenshot. Where is it? Like, these project boards are just going to be awesome. They can go across, oh, really? uh, across repos and it just shows you what state the whole kind of project in because a project could be front end back end and like we have at um ready hub we're going to have api back end we've got a discord bot at the front end we're going to have um the members list that we, we're kind of you know doing now and then we're also going to have things like a live map as well which hopefully not this one where's the project i think it has a screenshot for it here um, which is a, a live map on the live stream where people are on the map and it zooms to it and all the rest so um, yes, the project board, I need to do a live stream on setting that all up so that, um, you know, we can use the new project boards for that. Uh, Carl says, I've opened a new issue, a new project board already. So, uh, okay, cool. You beat me to it. We, if you could get familiar with the new project boards, we can have a play on a live stream for the API and the bot and all the rest, and we can just have a play. You can awesome. pair with me on that. Okay. Sorry, uh, Mark, I was getting distracted. Okay. No worries. What are we up to? All right, so 
what we're doing here is we're just rendering out the uh, oh, it doesn't style properly. So we've got members, right? Um, now we want to actually add our data from the Hello JS API um, to. So we have got name, GitHub, location. Um, let's add the. What have you got here? Uh, the the properties. Um, oh yes, yeah, name, name GitHub. I think it was GitHub. Let me check. Right. Yeah. Um, name, GitHub, and location. Yeah. GitHub. We can also make that shorter, but let's just make it verbose for now that we all understand what we're doing here. Yeah. Hold on. All right. Um, so we've created our member. So we imported our member. Let me just. I don't know. This is like. Um, just convention in the that we capitalize this or camel case it. Ah, I cannot move that component for some reason. Uh, do you want me to move never it? Or do you mean to do? No, no, no. Never mind. Never mind. Let me let me <laughs> rename it. Let's be let's be consistent. Just make um, it a capital case. Yeah. Yeah. So my bad. Not not knowing. Uh, All right. Update imports. No, we won't update. Yeah. We'll do it anyway. uh, yeah. Doesn't matter. It would actually um, by now. VS Code is smart enough that if you change a file and it recognizes that you're actually importing that file somewhere, it can automatically update the imports. So right okay. now, I had to imp uh, change that import manually here. OK. Um, but it's actually a very nice feature uh, helps with. The reason why I say no is in the past, long time ago, I found it used to break things. But, but you're yeah. right, probably now it's a lot better. OK, my bad. Yeah. All right. And now we want to. Do we need to update this page because it's importing the member? So we want to import the member list. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, you can start importing the member list already and changing it to the component down there. Um, removing the diff one one up because I'm that's ah, okay, sort of wrapping you. into the member list. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and so now I'm actually editing the member.js file. And adding those, um, the component member.js. And I will just add one more. So here I will add name, GitHub, and location. I think that's what we called it. Yeah. Sounds and right. here we will put in the name. Here we will put in their GitHub. And here we will put in their location um so that should work now and what's everyone's confidence who's watching like one to ten are you confident <laughs> this is going to work let us know I think I'm, I'm like an eight there there might be a bug in there somewhere um just because yeah ah we have not we have not installed um svr yet so can you npm yes. install Install SVR, SWR, sorry. SWR, right? Yeah. That's okay. the German, German in me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. And you have a question from Carl um, as well. Um, so actually, with state management, um, I, I like to use state that comes um, out of the box with React. Um, so they've added very nice things with like um, a new state engine that you don't need to use Redux or any of these things on top. Uh, it's called you like, oh, let me check, React effects, um, React state. Let me just double check. Hooks. There we go. Hooks. Um, so I would save state with hooks. Um, and the way you do it is, uh, let me let me share that here for Eddie uh, to share. OK, thank you. Um, we got pasting it in now. Yeah.
Yeah, I hear Redux is not used so much anymore. Yeah, especially since the you know the guy who who did Redux, they joined. He joined Facebook, and so they've been you know just including it into React more and more. Okay. And there's you know even with the new React uh, with React seventeen, uh, there's some really exciting things. Uh, with server-side rendering as well, but um, hopes they released since uh, 16.8, I think. And yeah, that's that's very exciting. Um, and that's how I would do state management in, in React or in Next.js as well. Um, Got you. Another yeah. question here. Any reason why you're using destructure the props in member? Let me go to member and have a look. Where do I where do I see destructure? Yeah, that's that's true. I could I could just send in the whole member. So okay, so have it like that. You mean? Yeah. And then in here, go member dot github. Okay, got you. Yeah. Okay. That's right. I could I could do that as well, and I could just paste in one member. I wanted to be very verbose and explicit, um, but. Yeah, let's let's run it. I'm I, I want to see if there's an error. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. <laughs> oh, L to compile. Okay. Um await is only allowed within async. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. Where's the await here? So we need to put an async. Oh that's very that's the wrong wrong one. So I can't remember now. I always forget. There we go. On the wrong side of the function. So you used the ES6. Can you not use like ES6 style stuff on this? I think um, it's there's like also an error. And let me stop it and start it again. Sometimes that happens, I think, of all yeah. that. Doesn't pick up the new files sometimes and all the rest. Okay, so we've got a map of undefined. So some issue with the data. Um, that's that's what I kind of thought um, because we didn't. We're just pasting in the data like plainly um so we're responding to our api request um in the hello js file um we're responding just to a uh, array and somehow it doesn't understand that it's this data let's just check that and see it's undefined though so it could be um uh, yeah, if this data is undefined when it's trying to do the loop. Uh, does this need an uh, uh, an await in front of it? Is this running async? This is already async because it's using the fetcher um, to fetch okay. the data. Okay, um, so we don't need to put an await in front of it because that will be async. I would have thought we'd do something like that. Maybe not. It says, what does it say? Has no, no effect. Should, okay, interesting. Should work properly. Okay. It's just that perhaps the. Um... Let's check the data. Let me do a refresh of of, of this one. Yeah, the data is there. It's an array of objects. So that looks good. Looks good. Array of objects. It says cannot read map of data. So data is undefined. Are you definitely sure that we get the data property out of this? Yeah, we should get a data property out of this. Definitely. Um, okay, we got some suggestions in the chat. All right. Uh, what have we got? Um, we've got Jason, res.json, um, Carl suggests. Not sure if that's for the node, for the API part. It must be for the Yeah, API. that's console log. Let's, let's do console log to see the data. I think that's always a good way. Okay. Uh, Seems like data is empty, though, because it's undefined. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to get anything. That is strange, yeah. It seems like it's not, um, it's racing ahead. Hmm. Okay, so let me try something else real quick then, just to, to prove something. Let me do... Um, Data. Yeah, this array. definitely works. Just to prove that, that it works with no members. Okay. Yeah. If I just grab again one of these or two of these actually out of that, 
Let's just prove that it works. Oh, no, it didn't. Uh, I think I've changed. Saved it. Maybe that's what, um, let me double check in the members. So, no? Uh, what change did you make? I made a change on the Oh, I need to save, I need to save Just that. Change that. No. All right. No, that didn't work. Interesting. Well, you know, this is this is real live coding. I love it when people see a YouTube video. Go, wow, you build that in seven minutes. It's like, no, it took me like two days. You should have <laughs> had seven minutes. I love it. Like, yeah, people see us struggling here. Um, and, but I have had clients yeah. come up to me and go, you know, message me and say, hey, you build the app in like 10 minutes. Can you do the same for us? It's like, it doesn't take 10 minutes. It took me like two days. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we have data that's clearly got data. It's an array and an object. And then here we go, data.map. So it should map over it. And you're saying you've got member and then you've got member name. I'm assuming it passes into members. So maybe we should do a console log in, into, can I do one in member just to make sure this is working? Yeah. Can I do a console log there. Stop that. Uh, yeah, let me put it here. Remember. Um, it's very odd, yeah. It's very odd. Okay, here we go. Have a look. Oh, it's not being called. Okay. So interesting. So member list is not calling member. And member is member list being called? We don't know. I could just put any console log in here and just see, right? Yeah. Let me do it. I'll do it after data. We know what data is, but let me just do it anyway. Should be called though on the it, it is called. So we can see now that we get those two data. So that does work. But yeah. then the map is not not calling is either not looping or not um, calling member because there's a console up here. Ah, you know what? Tell me. I know the error now. It should be returning something. Yeah, okay, I see the issue now. We've got some, uh, oh, lots of people in the chat. Sorry, we missed, missed all of them. I'm bringing them up on screen really quickly. Perfect, perfect. Um, cool. Hey, Angie, how you doing? Great to have you here. Thanks for joining. All right. Um, I found the error at least. So okay. we weren't returning the members. We were just, it was oh, still stuck on in this one. Like, Got you. Yeah. So it's always like something simple and stupid like that. Right? I've, I've, got, I've got to say that doing this, I, I miss Angular. Like it's so straightforward. This is like so overcomplicated. Like Angular just seems so much easier. I have to try Vue. So I want to try Vue tomorrow with Nux.js on a live stream. So I'm interested to compare it. Nice. How come people like React? Like seriously? <laughs> I just don't know. I, I hope I'm not ruining it here for everyone. No, uh, no, but this shows it's uh, like, it's it's normal, right? Uh, I think it's um, really, really good. All right. Okay. And we have Can one you... error. Oh, unique key. I know Vue has this issue as well. Angular doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so what does that remind me what that means? Okay, you gotta give it a unique key. Remember, let's let's make the unique key the GitHub. Um, usually typically we would like have an actually no, that's bad practice. Um, let's make the ID a a unique key. Okay. Um, and then Okay, that, oh, uh, oh, we still didn't like that. Okay. Are you making I'm changes? I'm updating a bunch of stuff here. Um, okay, let us know what you're changing. Okay, you're putting IDs in. Okay, got you. I put IDs in. Um, I updated IDs to the member component. Um, so I added this like key ID here. Okay. And then I added also the ID here. 
Okay, got you. So you're passing it in through the list to the member. Um, yeah, I guess I could do it like this. Yeah. All right. All good. And now we should. You have a unique uh, key prop on the list. Okay, we don't have IDs here. Like even these errors, they don't even tell you what file it's in. Angular, where are you? <laughs> right. Uh, there was no IDs here in lines seven to ten. Uh, um, do you know how to block people? I need to block Carl. View is awesome. It was a good start to <laughs> the conversation. But then Carl wrote, but I start to enjoy React more in the past few months. Carl, we can't be friends. <laughs> <laughs> Let's um I wanna see if the um, Data is actually if there's data in there. Can we like refresh the page? Yeah, let's do it. Let's have a look. Okay, so the da no data inside. Okay, so we still have that original issue that we had before. Yeah. And the API still works. Yeah, it's got ID on it, like you updated it. And that I'll just refresh that That's extra strange. just in case. Okay. You know, while you're fixing this, I'll quickly build a, uh, an Angular app really quickly. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing. Right. I love using React people. Nice. Um, so right. now this is, shows it's normal. This is a 500. Um, yeah. And the API is definitely there. Someone did mention mention calls. Um, but I don't think it's going to be called. I think by default, because they're running on the same website. Yeah, that's that's usually not, okay. yeah. it should be working on the same. I'm thinking, but we cannot even. Is console log didn't and output anything either? Yes. No, it didn't. Doesn't look That's like very it. Strange. Let me do another refresh. That's very strange. We can keep it simpler if you want, and you. I saw from the docs they have. Um, what do you call? They use fetch, I think. If that makes it. Yeah, let's use fetch. Just fetch. Um, That's all. Where was it? API. Ah, uh, maybe. I'm. I overcomplicated it. Uh, where is it? Wait, fetch. Yeah, I mean, I have fetch already there in the bottom, um, so typically it should work. Oh yeah, you do have fetch. You're right. Yeah. So you have fetch, and then. But it already returns the response, so it returns a JSON file. We could put a console in here. A console yeah, let's see what, what the what the result is here. Remove the whole of the response object. It's not my return. Oh, I think that's the bracket. Not that. Yeah. Nothing. No, it's still not getting there either. So this uh, fetcher is calling fetcher. All right. How about we? All right. Let's let's ditch this. Um, fetch, and then API hello, and let's see what's happening here. If we just fetch it like that, without okay. oh, it broke completely. Why is that? Um, oh, it stopped running. It completely crashed the app. Okay. Oh, it doesn't like something at all. All right. Um, no absolute URLs are supported. Oh. Interesting. Let me just see. I did see something in their docs about this. Where is it? That's why they used SVR. Yeah. Oh, is that why? Okay. Mm. Um, what did I see their examples? Doc. Yeah, we can also use. Um, where is it? API roots. Basically, get static props, um, but it also uses fetch, and <laughs> it also. Once a full, but we can we can use local host. You can just hard yeah, exactly. For now, we can use local host. Um, yes, because it does seem like they do use um, the address. Okay, let's let's do this for now. 
I mean, this should definitely give us the data now. Let's have a look. Otherwise, I'm, I need to start the server again. Oh, yeah, it crashed. Here we go. <laughs> no data. What? <sighs> That's... Oh, no, don't we need an await now for it? Yeah. It will be async. And then uh, do I need to make this an async function as well? Yeah. Remove that import. Oh, the whole thing crashed again. Wait, let's have a look. It does not like this data children. Oh, okay. What happened this time? Map. Why does it not like that? I think some data is undefined. All right. Um, is it because it will data be? Um, what happens if we save it to Maybe. Data, console log data and see what's inside? That looks good. Oh, that looks better. They did bring back some data. What happened? Uh, 200 OK headers. And it still crashed on that. Let me read the read the chat and see what it is. So you've got some suggestions. Uh, yeah, who can help suggest, uh, Axios. Um, I think React has it built in. So I don't want to kind of start bringing in other libraries. Yeah. Um, Side by side, React versus Angular, build live. Yeah, I think we should. Uh, I think we should. <laughs> Angular would, would be on like the feature 10 by now. Uh, I like that idea. Um, Carl, enjoy your dinner. Thanks for, thanks for joining. Yeah, uh, thanks so much, Carl. Jason Pass, local Jason fetch, kill me, never work. It, I never have this issue with Angular, but again, it's got its own built-in HTTP stuff that I use. That's um, so weird, though. I've not had this issue. Um, well, it's live. Of course, we're going to have issues, right? Um, so uh, Todd's saying a different port, but that's 3,000. Nothing else is running on 3,000. No, it should, it should be on 3,000 because you can access it from the, from the browser, right? Yeah. So it works on the browser. Um, Let me have a quick look at here what they suggest. They have got an await. Oh, they've got an await on to get the JSON, but still, we didn't even get that far. So let me just do that now. So if I say that's response... <sighs> On the function. Const, uh, <laughs> no, so the, all right. Don't do the async here. Um, can you remove the async from the line three? We need the async on the function, on the actual function inside hello.js. Make this a async function. No, but this one doesn't need it, is it? That's what I have here. OK. Uh, OK. Because I think that that was working in the browser. Well, let's save it and let's try it. And so you, is this OK? Are you happy with this? It breaks. It didn't break. OK, so we're, we're looking better. API doesn't work. Interesting. Yeah, uh, a wait is only allowed within an async function at the top. Okay, the then sorry. All right, and here we don't need it. In the member list, we don't need it. That still broke. Did that break? Let me start it again. I think it got itself a bit of a mess. So yeah, that didn't have it. So that should still work. The API, yes, the API still works. Mm -hmm. um, and this one crashed it. Okay. Did not like uh, objects are not valid as a React child uh, collection child use array instead. Interesting. We know the uh, the API part works. Uh, I thought Copilot was uh, going to figure this out. Yeah, let's just try. Uh, yes. <laughs> We are going to store it in a database. We wanted to get it hard-coded working. Therefore, we know it's just working from the hard-coded version. And then we're right. going to connect to a database. So yes, we are. Stay tuned. We just need to sort out this last issue. Then the next step will be connecting a database. Yeah. Um, I think they're the docs. Go back. It does say fet, await fetch and then res JSON as suggested. I'm not going to pull it out like that. 
Right, but these are um, in the props. So basically, what this is doing is this is this like static, um, like site okay, generation. Got you. Okay, so I'm in the wrong section then. Um, no, we can also use that. Um, however, we need to add that to the. So we need to add that to the bottom. Um, and then blah, 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 call it members. Um, and then the props will be members. Okay. And then we adding members in here. And then this should be members instead of. We should try and use Copilot a bit more. Okay. Yes, you're right. We kind of got carried yes, away. Yes, Copilot more. <laughs> All right. Um, wait, fetch members, members, props. So this will store whatever comes back from the API in a variable called members. Then it will pass that into the props. Okay. And above in line three, and we will ingest those props um, as per. Okay. Example. It will it will inject it. So similar to the way members gets it injected, you're saying that this will also kind of get it injected because of um, this. Yeah, because it runs on this page. And okay, so should we should we think it works? Let's have a look. It's, it's, <laughs> Let's see. Oh, check API is running. API is good. Stay again, I think. Not like the map. It really does not like the map. But why it says map? Oh, sorry, bring it up. Only property map of undefined. That data is still not defined. So um, it's like really not possible where this data because the, we see the data. <laughs> members log the members, but I don't even think it's getting there. No, it's not yeah. getting the members. some reason it's 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 like dying completely on the it's obviously getting there but then um and that looks very very similar to their example um, get static procs you got no context but i guess you're not you don't need that and they're not even using it themselves uh, yeah, you're using the return. You're using props like them, and they're returning it as data. You're returning it as members. That's that's fine. It's um, all. It should be all the same. That's what's bothering me a bit. No worries. I'll answer some questions in the chat. Um, we should probably use Copilot more. You're right. Um, yes. Back ticks on the URL um, would only be if you've got a variable in it, though. I wouldn't think that would have made That's a right. difference. Yeah, it wouldn't make a difference. A variable there. Is it because of the fetch library? Well, the fetch library doesn't seem to be doing us any favors at the moment, so it could be. Cause, <laughs> a cause? I'm just not sure it's cause. Um, did they, I think they have... I did see something in their docs about cause. But I would have thought running out off the same server, it should be okay. Cause look, it doesn't be available during request time, such as generated. What's the default? I remember reading somewhere what the default state is of cause, but you usually get a cause error if it's cause, it usually says right. it's got a cause error. So I have a feeling it's not that, but again, I haven't used React, so this is um me for the first time for trying to figure it out um i'm just fascinated that this it doesn't work the way we expect it because it should but preview is true if the page is in preview mode the undefined otherwise wait a second wait a second i see it undefined here that sounds familiar but that's for oh that's for context okay so we're not using mm -hmm. context so that mm -hmm. should be okay um, 
props revalidate. <laughs> wow, you've written the docs. Um. <laughs> uh, I think, Todd, I think we did that already. If we hard coded it, or not, did we not? If we hard code it in the page, is that what you're saying? See if you can get it to render pasting the data into the object in the page. We did do that. And yeah. That worked, that worked fine. So we had it up here. And that did work, if I remember correctly. Is that right, Mark? That's right, yeah. Yeah, so that did work. Um, but now we want to get it from the API and then connect it to the data stacks database. I guess we can remove this async. It still doesn't help with why the members are not loading properly. So we don't even get anything into this members. And oh, I could try something. Let me try something halfway between what we did and what is suggested. Yeah. Let me copy like three of these or two of these. Um, and let me go back to here and let me comment this out. Let me just put it straight in here, right? I could do that. That should work, right? Work. Why does it not like um, the array? Expected colon, really? Okay, my plan doesn't work. I can do it as a variable up here, right? Let me just cut that. Let me do members. Let me just do const equal. Okay, it's auto completing for us. Yes, please. There we go. It's auto completing for us. Copilot to the rescue. Very nice. You get one. So we should get one coming in. Let's have a look. I want to start it up again. No, I think we. It's. Not a property map of undefined. It still thinks it's undefined. So maybe it isn't the fetch, because here it's not the fetch. Members coming through. When we did it up here, it worked, but it's not coming through there. Yeah, that's strange. Uh, yes, uh, Sassy, Sassy, I hope I pronounced your name right. The view stream is tomorrow, 11 a.m. BST. It's already created on the YouTube channel, so you can do a set reminder. We're going to do exactly the same thing we did today. But instead <laughs> of using Next.js, we're going to use Nux.js, which is the which is Vue.js, basically. Um, oh, no, Carl, take time off work. Work can wait. You use Jira at work. You might as well miss it. It's fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, so can we, uh, let me think, I don't know React at all, so for me, this is the first time I'm using this, and it all looks like voodoo to me, but let me just, just double check, I'm going to put that there, and I'm going to change, let me call that, oh, so not co I'll comment that out, uncomment that, go back, yeah. um, I'll leave that how it is, because if it doesn't pass in, yeah, data, that's fine, and that should come to members. So that should now show data. We start it again. Members has already been declared. Oh, I know why. Const here. There we go. Okay. It has worked. So yes, by putting it in the same um, component directly, yeah. it, this, this works. And if I um, comment that out and we try to use the get static props, then yeah. it doesn't work. No, it doesn't understand it. Can we... All right. Then how about we do it for now um, so that we can actually move on to the um, data stacks part? Um, for now, we'll add the um, the dummy data in here, just as a okay. In in this bit, can we? And when we did the fetch here, that didn't work either, did it? No. Let me just try that one more time. I'm going to just maybe we did something silly. So we got the fetch, we got the full URL. Um, da, 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 da. We're doing con. I just put that to be members. I'll put that and this. We we don't need. I can comment all that out, right? Oh, did I miss a bracket? I did miss a bracket. So that didn't work either. Do we even know if it's calling this one? Let's can we say console.log 
API called. Let's see even if it's trying to make the request. I'm going to close members. Mm -hmm. see it's trying to. But I think there's an issue with this async again. No. Uh, await only allowed with the members list. Oh, did I not? We need an async here. You're right. Um, yeah, now we need to remove the members prop. Oh, yes, of course, yeah. you're right. Yeah, that's not needed. Okay. That looks a bit better now. Successfully yeah. compiled. Okay, so here you go. We ran it. It broke, but it did hit the API. If you look, this is the console log from the API. API called. Maybe because it's an array that's being returned. Maybe we need to wrap the array in an an object. In an object. It is better practice, and it's supposed to be more secure. But I was. Where does this console log come from? Interesting enough. That just has. That just has the the. There's no data in there. <laughs> so where does where does that console logs it? But that would be in the browser because that's for the UI. So how is on the yeah. side? Is it getting all that? me um that's because it's in dev mode it does maybe it. each child should have a unique key prop mm -hmm. that's what we have though but we do have that so that but that's a warning i guess that wouldn't cause it to um yeah uh, we deserve a drink after this. This is like hello world. We should be able to get this working. Don't <laughs> worry. We're, we're, we're going to keep, um, keep, keep, we'll get this working in a moment. I'm, I'm pretty confident. So, all right. Let me just wrap this in a simple object. Okay. Do um, that. Maybe call it data. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. Um, Oh, no, you, you need the, the bracket on the outside of the data. That's right. My bad. No, no, it's okay. I think uh, the pressure's building up, but we're going to do it, and we'll know people have stuck with us through thick and fair, thin. Let's see. Um, okay, so that time, it all got console logged out. Okay, brilliant. And in the browser, so if we check here, oh, it's crashed. But the API also doesn't work or what? Oh, it crashed as well. Yeah, because it keeps crashing out. It's still not liking this map. Members map is not a function. Oh, because it's not an array anymore. Okay, that's our mistake. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be members.data. Um, yeah. But it's going to be now. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Thanks for, for everyone supporting. Um, Todd and Sassy and everyone else, we would really appreciate it. Let's do the API first. Yes, okay, so we have data. It looks good. Ready UI. No. It does not work. Map into array. I think we're missing something. But we have a promise in here. So we have an object promise. But why is there a promise? Where do you see that? All right, so here it says uh, found object promise. Oh, the promise is promise. because of the await, use array instead. If you meant to render a collection of children, use an array instead. Objects are not valid. So maybe we were on the right track with the object, uh, with the, the array. Should be able to do it the same way. It, hmm. Yeah. That's a promise. We await for it. But what does it return? doesn't return it says any okay this is javascript i wonder if members itself is uh is some is, is uh, got a promise in there as well i don't know um mm -hmm. we're not getting the console log out so i don't understand, I don't understand why it's getting to here so fast when it's not passing this console because we get nothing nothing come out so mm -hmm. that's kind of hard Not a valid as a chart or a chart. Okay, so okay, I got a suggestion. What about don't return this? And let's just see if that console log appears. Can I figure right. that out? Would that 
and that the comment doesn't look good. Let me delete it. Oh, I don't want to delete it. The, the comment should work like that. Should work. Yeah. Okay. Let's try. Yeah, it's already looking better. Raise up. Okay. Let me just start it again. I'm not feeling so confident. The error didn't change. Okay, the error didn't change. So it's not from that part. No, it just doesn't like. All right. So it doesn't like the data that we were returning. Let me okay, return. So, so put it back to that. an array. And let's see. What if we chain then catch? Yeah, you could um, you could do then catch, but await in async is is the same, but it's just it's a bit cleaner than trying rather than trying to nest it. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, then catch is still much better than um, the callbacks and stuff. We could wrap it in a try catch. I mean, that's a good point. We didn't do that, but I'm yeah. guessing we'll we'll see the error that we're seeing um, on the display already because it's in dev mode. It's handling that for us. Yeah. Um, and it's great that Todd gets the same problems that we get. Okay, brilliant. We're all in. Uh, we're all in the same same, same situation. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, right. So, shall I save this and try again? Yeah. Okay, so it's back to an array. I have just started and stopped it again. Oh, and we did get an error. Objects are not valid as React child, but when we did it as an array, it told us. Oh no, before it was telling us to do it. Uh, let's have a yeah, look. maybe there should be a new error now. That's the same, still an object. Why is there still the same one? An why it thinks it's an object? Um, and why can't we console log? That's, yeah, yeah. that's what I don't understand. Okay, let's, I mean, I can wrap it in a try catch. I don't know if that would make, I don't think it'd make a difference because we're in dev mode. Um, I have a yeah. feeling it will just output. Thank you, Copilot. Thank you. Yes. I have a feeling <laughs> we're um, going to get the same. Members not defined. How's that possible? Ah, OK, because now the. Oh, yeah, because of the try catch. catch. Yes. Yeah. So, um, OK, so I need to put, I need to put that in the um, in here. Same error. I think the same thing. Let me remove the uh, the try catch just to keep it cleaner. Okay. What it's trying, obviously trying to do some magic before it gets to this console log. Yeah. I'm not sure what magic is returning. What other thing I can look at is look at docs again. Yes, people will laugh at me. What is it returns? It's got the fetch, it's got the res JSON and return it to data. Um, if there's no data, return not found. Okay, fine. So we could do something like that, but I don't think that would make a difference. So I want to put this back in because that obviously wasn't breaking then. Yeah. And we could do something like this if it said if uh, not members return loading. <laughs> okay. I was going to. Um, what do they say? Not found true. But then we need to use not found somewhere, don't we? Um, I return loading. Will that just display loading? Is that a React thing that instead of doing this return, it will just display yeah. that? Yeah, that's right. So let's try that. Okay, but it's still having that issue. So it's... Something that's happening before here, yet yeah, when we hard code it, it's fine. So if I did something like this and put const, and I actually don't have const members because it says if it's not defined, it should do loading. In theory, const members equals, I could just do undefined, right? Mm -hmm. empty, empty array, but that would be listed as something. Um, it was an empty array in a minute because it should just the page should load in theory. Sort of doesn't like that. So it's not even um, some magic is happening. Wait a second. Something. But it's that we've commented out the fetch now, so it can't even um, 
be that. No. I mean, if I do that, an empty array, so in theory, I should just not loop over anything and should just return an empty. We have some right, suggestions. Yeah. Maybe use effect hook to call the fetch. I don't know what that means. That's a, a React thing. I'll leave that to Mark. Uh, I have the feeling the issue is not even where we're working on right now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, could it be something? I'm thinking where it could be, but uh, it's just. But the interesting thing is, how come if we hard code it here, it works? Yeah. Right. So if I do do const members, sorry, remove that. That was working. We're not going to work now, right? But, but that was work was working. Members. Uh, oh no, that's not working now. Okay, that was working before. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait a second. This is team list. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to. I it should work with this SVR. It's it's bothering me that it's not. Ah, uh, okay. So team list, you haven't included though. So that's that's okay. Um, so that wouldn't be affecting our our project. No, I no, just no. want to get it back to working with the the. Um, it's not working with that anymore. With, either. No. Uh, I would still keep getting this error. If you meant to render a collection of children is using there a race. like a line of code or something? where that arrow is thrown let me try and remove everything we're not using yeah remove well. everything we're not using um, just understanding let me the async move the async as well uh oh yes remove that yes okay that now works and we get two people so that is working the json is being blocked but it's not an object i always run into this um, there's no key in there, but there is a key in there actually. ID. Does it want it call it as key? Uh, it should have a unique key property, so maybe it wants that as key. But that's a warning. I don't think that's a an issue. Okay, so that now works. Okay, I've just got to. I can't believe that these two things. That this this fetch was such an issue. <laughs> Like seriously, I need to do it one more time. I, I can't believe it does. It breaks. Something breaks in there. So these um, two cause it to break again. Um, people are suggesting use effect. I don't know what that means though. Uh, let me check in the use effect. Um, I cannot understand why that doesn't work. <sighs> The API works, you remove data, so that all looks good. You, oh, it says use effect instead of um, making it async. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's, okay, we've got people helping, awesome. And people say you cannot do it like that, okay. Got you. Okay. Can't so thanks sure for those suggestions. Cool. Okay. So apparently you can't do it like this. And who slates Angular? Like seriously, like Angular would have been done like four hours ago. Okay. That's before the live stream started, but I'm obviously exaggerating. Um, so interesting. But looking at it, the way they did it, they did it this way in their, in their docs. I know they're doing it in get static props though. Maybe that's why. And I know yeah. I try to um, do things a bit different. It's a special function. So what did Kenrick say? Uh, you can't return component from async function like that. It's expected a React component, but it's returning promise. The docs is not a React component. Yeah, Kenrick, love it. Um, docs is not a React component. Ah, OK, got you. Starting to make, say, make sense now. Got you, cool. All right, but how? We've got harsh jumping is in now as well. It's a React hook. Okay. I 
I feel we're close. I think so. Um, have you got your cursor? Let me see if I can follow your cursor. Um, okay, but that makes sense. It was expecting a React component, but it was returning a promise. Okay. So could we also use, um, could we not do something like this, get static props? Would that work? Um, this is a question to everyone. Um, move it into its own function. Okay. Would I move it into something like this? What did Kendrick say? Um, move it to its own function. It was its own function. Yeah, that's what we had before. Um, that was the was. issue. So that's why we use this like use as we are SWR. Um, let, let's let's just give that a shot again um, because I've seen that before. Um, and so what we want is okay. You're driving right. I'm leaving you to drive. Yeah. So we're gonna remove this. We're gonna fetch as well. Is this the page? No, um, I'll answer uh, Kendrick's uh, questions that I can answer. I don't know React. But yeah, members list is being brought into index.js uh, right here. So it's not, yeah. not the page itself. Now the question is... It's a component we're importing into the page. Do we need the full... You can try it without the full URL, but in their docs, yeah. we have the full URL. Let me try the full the. You can copy and paste it from. So we have it as a separate function now, that returns this, which is basically like what we had here, and use SWR. But we had this before and it didn't work, right? Now, members. Do you want me to test it? Yeah, go for it. Should throw at least a different arrow, not the same. Weird okay, one. and um, Kendrick saying you can only use get static props on the page. Okay, right. in a, not in a component. Yeah. Okay, what's in members now? In members, it is the actual item of the uh, of the list. If that makes sense, that should be quite members. The individual quite... member, basically, the individual yeah. profile. Uh, member JS is quite a kind of a it's quite I suppose stupid in itself, which is which is a good thing. <laughs> it's like, like Ember JS with an M. <laughs> let me give this a run and see. Uh, the no uh, the data in console log I meant. Um, Wait, there's only one default export allowed per module. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, yeah, give Kendrick the uh, VS Code share link. Yeah, that's true. Kendrick, are you in the Eddie Hub Discord? Send me a DM. I'll send you the the link. Actually, I don't need to even export it. All okay. Right. So, is uh, Kendrick suggesting remove the console log? Could that be causing an issue? Uh, no. What's the Discord? Oh, sure. Let me uh, uh, Discord dot Hub dot org. And uh, so I should have put HTTP in front of that. And then I'll be on the right hand side um, on the mods. Just uh, yeah, send me a DM and I can send you a VS Code link. Or in fact, I can get you on the live stream if you want. You're welcome to join on the live stream, more the merrier. Up to you. If you don't want to be on uh, on audio or video, you can just put, you can turn off your camera. Just be on audio. Um, but uh, if you just want to be in VS Code, that's also fine. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, yeah, we go. I right. got some. Uh, Kendrick sent me a message. Okay. Hey, uh, live stream link. Uh, you can do audio only if you like or. You know what? I'll just send you all, and you can you can choose which one you want. Um, <laughs> let me send you uh, the um, invite somebody uh, if you want to join the live stream. Yeah, and you can do audio only. And let me get you the VS Code link as well. I can't remember how I got that. Um, 
Let me make this a bit smaller for a second. Co chair. Uh, invite participant in the bottom. Uh, invite participant. Here we go. No? No. It's thinking about it. It's thinking about it. <laughs> oh, Kendrick. Kendrick's joined. Okay, brilliant. Let's uh, add Kendrick to the stream. Kendrick, thank you so hey. much for your help and joining. Oh, How are you doing? It's doubling up. One second. Let me close the stream. Okay, great. Hello. Uh, hey, hey guys. Have you here. Thanks see for you, guys are, uh, you guys are struggling here. Let me uh, see if I can help you out. <laughs> Man, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No yes. problem. Um, let's, so let's do you give... want to send the link for the VS Code? Yeah, I'm struggling to get the link. Um, I don't know why it's not uh, coming up. Why is it not coming up? Uh, Let me see if there's... Start search. Why doesn't this share work? What does this one do? Copy collaboration link. Oh, here we go. That might work. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, here you go. Hopefully that works. And while you're doing that, uh, Kendrick, what is your GitHub um, username? Uh, Kenrick. GitHub. Sorry, say that again. Ken. Rick. Oh, it's just Kendrick. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. No, no, G. Mm -hmm. And where where are you? Where are you dialing in from? Um, I'm from? in nice and sunny Toronto. Awesome. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Everyone, <laughs> give Kendrick. Uh, follow on GitHub. Here's, here's the link. <laughs> yeah, I haven't posted online on in, in GitHub in a while. No, um, we're gonna we're gonna get you some more more followers. So uh, okay, awesome. Right, jump back to the code. Hopefully, you were able uh, to join. Oh yeah, I think I got it. Install something. One second. Oh yeah, it might need you to log in and install something. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I mean, I've been watching it and I just resent the fact that you've been shitting on <laughs> on React so much for Angular. I'm just like, mm, okay, I think, I think I have to say something now. <laughs> Everyone's going to see View tomorrow really quick. Angular, Actually, maybe yeah, next I, week. Really you know quick. what? I feel like at this point, once you reach a, uh, a level of knowing, because like, I, I, I've used Angular, I've used View, I've used React. Okay. And it's really just what you're comfortable with, because at some point, at some level, they all kind of. It, it just matters like which one you have your you have your groove in. Okay. And some people are more comfortable in one, others in the other. It's just what it is. Well, whatever you're comfortable with, go with that one. That's true. Um, because they all pretty much do the same thing at this point. <laughs> yeah. And, all, and, and they all JavaScript, and you use the same libraries across all of them. Um, uh, yeah. This is where you're comfortable with. That's uh, true. Let me see. I love that it's becoming like an international collaboration right now. Yeah, this is like <laughs> super international. <laughs> Germany, Canada, I'm going to say Portugal. So yeah, really cool. And we've got people. Um, Todd, where are you dialing in from? Uh, Todd says, Kendrick, uh, we'll show the Germans and Brits what's up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. um... The URL. Uh, it should be in the DM on, on Discord. Yeah, it took me also two two tries to really join. It's, it's so weird. Okay. Here we go. Accept, read, and write. Okay, you're in. Awesome. Okay, great. So uh, let's let's start with the the components list here. This is the first issue you guys are facing, right? The one on member yeah. list. Yeah. Right, so you're using uh, um, use SWR, which is going to do the fetching for you um, inside a component. So use, a, use SWR is really just um, a syntactic sugar over um, React state hooks, mm -hmm. uh, React hooks. It's what it's doing under the hood. It's calling use effect and waiting on the result from the promise and then updating the state. Um, and it's just exposing members at the end. So it's just it's it's well what we could do is I could break it down for you so you can see exactly what it's doing and then we could roll it back up into use SWR just so you're like very aware because it's we can break it down to like using um let's do um, it the, the yeah, yeah. Let's, okay let's do that yeah. okay so we're gonna we're not gonna use this so we have to use we're gonna use um, uh, use use effect. And we also need we also need to um, 
your state? Yeah, we also need to use your state because uh, we need to keep the state across renders. Um, because it'll, it'll re re render every time um, there's, there's any sort of change. And when use effect calls the, um, when it's first rendered, use effect is fired. Uh, it's going to do, do the actual requests. Um, that's going to re-render to say that there's no data as yet. So there's like a pending state that you have to um, you have to uh, uh, program for. And then once it's completed, then you can show the data. Uh, so it's, it's just something that you, you, you have to do to remember that it will, rem it will start rendered immediately before there's data. And then when there is data, it will um, re-render with the data. Okay. Um, so, um, React, right? And I'm just going to call this out. I'm going to use this example that you have here. Um, and uh, actually, I want to move this out as well. So I'll just say uh, async, async function. And then this, right? Okay. And this is calling against your API, and then this is returning the return members here. And Right. So this all makes sense. It's just a very simple call to um, to uh, to this URL, fetching the data, parsing JSON, returning it. It's it's not React. It's not anything. It's just JavaScript. Yeah. Um, That's right. So um, now comes the the, the the React part. So we need we need first um, in the components we need a state. So when the when the when the um, when the component first first renders, uh, we're gonna have empty members. So this means this means there's no members, right? Uh, okay, let's go. Through. And the way we set that up is we we can uh, call new state, and new state will take a default parameter. Um, the first parameter is the default of what members will be when it's first rendered. Um, when the component is first rendered, so it's just gonna be an empty array. So there's there's no members as yet. Oh, yeah. um, Correct, right. and then uh, we're going to call use effect, and use effect is going to actually um, handle the fetching and the updating of the state. Um, so here oh, we can just see a bit of ES six. Nice. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I forget why we don't say like function, but there's a reason for that. Um, I can't tell you off the top of my head, but. No uh, the React Docs is is is, is pretty good at um, telling you exactly why they do some things. So here we have use effect, and I need to do um, fetch members. So here we go, fetch members. So there's something you I want to point out here. It's um, there is a gotcha for using async functions here. It's actually um, in the documentation they say do not. Use an async function in use effect. Okay. Um, instead, you can call. Let's use the dot, the dot then syntax. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the dot then syntax, this is going to return members. So this is going to be mem. Let's call it mem. Uh, let's call it m. And then we're going to call set members, which is going to update our state here. So in the use state, it returns it returns a tuple. An array with two um, options: the the data and a, and a way to uh, and a function to update that data. Okay. Um, and this function will now take the uh, the members as returned from the promise. Uh, yeah. Um, and then yeah, that's it. So when members when members uh, the, what you'll see in a console is that the first time this renders, it's going to render this members, which is going to be an empty array. Yep. It's gonna actually complete the um, the the. It's gonna call use effect in, at the same time. That that promise is going to start, and then when it's completed, it's gonna update or update members, which is then going to trigger a re-render, and then you'll have members here and members here. The the last thing that you have to set is um, dependencies, um, and what this is is uh, it, you're telling use effect. Um, when it, when it should be called, 
Um, so if the data in here changes for some reason, let's say you had a, a, a prop here that you passed in to um, this array, if this prop changes, um, which then which then changes the dependencies, it will cause re the use effect to refire. Um, so that's good for if you have like if you're doing page navigation and you you're not really moving, you're not really re rendering different components. You're just changing the data out. Um, so like you clicked on a different URL, it's the same page. So it's going to do a request and then it's going to get um, the data for that, that the ID, for instance. So you can like pass the ID, the member ID here, and then this will cause a, a trigger for the use effect. Since we only want to run this once and never again, basically, um, um, sending it to an empty array will ensure that use effects will use effect will only be run once. And since you don't have any properties here, so if you run this now, you should see uh, your members at least at least yeah. get the data back. Okay, I'm super super excited. Refresh the page. Go scroll down, maybe the console okay, here we go so we've got the empty array and then we've got the six and then we, yeah we got all the members were called because that console log is in the member member uh, file so right. that worked perfect yeah, yeah. so um there's that used uh swr option as well yeah, you, sure you, you want to do that now okay yeah so I, yeah I what does we do wrong on this yeah yeah i brought that down to, to basically what it uses swr is doing under the hood it's doing a lot more it does like um automatic refreshing and um caching as well so uh if you navigate to um if you navigate to for instance one one member's profile page and it, it, it already pulled that information before what it will do is it will immediately show a cached version and it will start fetching in the background. So the yeah, app feels really snappy. Um, and then you, you basically just have uh, essentially extra, um, just the, the changed information showed up in the background. The other thing it actually uh, is really cool that it does is um, it does this thing where it, it watches your, uh, it, watches, it watches if you're, you're active on a page. And if you leave the page and then you come, like if you leave your browser and then you come back, you will do another fetch in the background. Um, so it will almost be like live updating information. Yeah, that's pretty, nice. it, it's, it's, nice. it's pretty neat. But really under the hood, it's just doing this, essentially. It's just the okay. time. Got you. We've got some, I don't know if you've seen the chat, we've got um, npm install Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Definitely need that. Uh, Todd, did you guys get? I'm oh, sorry. Did you guys get the the copilot invite? Yeah, I have copilot as well. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get uh, lucky. Anyways, did you <laughs> okay, um, so did you uh, did you sign up to their waiting list? I did. Um, DM me. I've got your GitHub username, but afterwards yeah. DM me it again, and I'll and I'll see who I can speak to at GitHub. See if we can get you bumped up the list. Nice. Okay, so this is example one. This is, we're going to try to use it this other now. Uh, so I'm not familiar too much with the syntax of using some I use another one called use query. It's basically the same. It's the same. They do the same thing essentially. Um, but use SLR is is built by Forsell, um, which is by which also builds Next. So it's very popular. It's just like already there. Um, it's in your documentation as well. So when you when you let's so let's start by debugging this because I'm not exactly sure what's wrong here. So you have your members and can you um, run this? Let me see what yeah, happens. Yeah, sure. Let's have a look. Okay, it doesn't look like it broke this time, so it's looking more promising. Uh, okay, so I commented that out. My bad. Okay. Oh yes. <laughs> okay. So this time. Oh, oops. does not like uh, the map on Doesn't like our map again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we'll better see you back now. Hello. Sorry about that. No, oh, no good. worries. Okay. I see you better now. Yeah. <laughs> I realized there's a little light in the back. 
So yeah, he doesn't like your, can I see the error again? Yeah, sure. It uh, doesn't like the map, it's saying members is undefined. F undefined. Okay, uh, I think you need a bit of fetch. Can I see what this looks? Uh, let me follow you as well, follow so we can see exactly where you are. Yeah, can you, um, can you refresh? Okay, you don't need to refresh this. Uh, it should just work. It should just uh, refresh itself. Okay. So you go back to the browser, uh, and you can show us in the console. Uh, sorry, so they again make the console bigger. Yeah. Uh, oh. Okay, so it doesn't like your get request. So. I just I, thought, there we go. Yeah, on. I think. Try this. If that was the solution, then <laughs> I want my one hour back. <laughs> no, no, like no. Same no. issue. Um, interesting. Right? Can I, can I? It's weird. Yeah, that is weird. So let me forget about arts. Actually, you know what? Angular. You know what? No, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Let's, no, because it's very interesting to, to debug problems like this. So you're passing everything in Fetcher into um, fetch. into fetch, right? But do we actually know what is in X? Oh, that's a good point. No, we didn't check that. So let's 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 debug that because it might be adding something. Like it may be adding the URL and then that being the orgs. Uh, so let's see. Orgs. Yep. Let's see what's happening. Let's see. Okay. Is it loaded? Is it in let, me just, let me just start it again, just to just to make me sure. Okay. Okay. Still the same error. Uh, but no log. Are you filtering only for errors? Um. Oh, good question. I'd hope not. Default levels. No, I still got info and warnings. Good question. That's good. Good check. Um. Yeah, I should see this. That means something else is wrong. I don't think anything is wrong with uh, this exactly. So let's let's let me look at the use SWR. Like um, example. Let me bring up the docs as well so people can see. Uh, okay. SWR. They're gonna know what I'm Vertel. Here we go. Oh, you know what? Uh oh. No, but that doesn't explain why it's not fiction either. Uh, Mm. Let me see something here. So get started. It probably uses a sword as a fetcher. Uh, yeah. This does look familiar. This, yeah, yeah. This makes sense. We could we could check out what the error uh, what the error is coming through. I suppose it is getting thrown. It's 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 coming from like, and I mean that's like work over backwards here. So I'm going to uh, call use this a fetcher. And the other thing that we didn't catch here is use SWR actually returns um, an object. Uh, so let's let's say it's this request. Let's say this is a request, right? Mm -hmm. um, so use this SWR. Um, if you look at the type for what this returns, If we go to the end, the response. Yeah, so this is what it actually returns. It returns a data, uh, which is the data that's from your request, an error, and uh, a way to um, uh, revalidate it, or basically re-request it. So you, you can't say there's a member here, because members is not a member. It's not a property on that, that request object. You basically have to say data. If you want to catch it to be members, you have to say it like this. So um, let's try that. Let's give that a go. No. So there's something else happening here. There's an internal server error. So if you go to your network tab in your browser, yeah, there's something strange happening there. I think it's a 500, which is odd, because when I can reach it in the browser, that is, mm -hmm. is fine. 
-hmm. so that does work and if it was cause it wouldn't give a, a 500 no because it's 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 not it, i don't think it's anything like that because we we, we we requested it you saw that we wrote a fetch and that got the data and everything yeah exactly um, yeah that's true so if you go to uh if you go back scroll scroll down on your headers let me see uh, what the full request is uh the request response um Scroll request. Yeah, that doesn't. That doesn't look like the request you're making because it doesn't have the slash API slash. Um, yeah, we need to look for the slash API slash hello. Oh yeah, you're right. So this is the request headers, <laughs> and you're right. It's saying host correct, referrer okay, also correct. But where's the path? Uh the path will be in request. Mm, up top. But I think it oh. should be. Maybe on the left side, Eddie, where um, if you scroll up a bit, yeah, um, yeah, this one, no, yeah, yeah, no, no. I think this oh. is a request. I think this is the error because uh, this was the first one, yeah, yeah. And then I don't. Sorry, it reloaded. Okay. Um, um, so I don't think anything is wrong with this. To be honest, this is, looks like a like a, what ha uh, hmm. uh, like a weird. Uh, okay. So let's remove this. Actually, let's 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 change it. Let's do this. I want to. I want to see something. You want to see it break? Probably. Yeah, I want to see it break. I want to. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah, that's not the issue. There's something else happening here. No, uh, wait a second. Let's just check. Um, if you check the re request headers. Yeah. But it's not even getting there. No. It's not even. Yeah. It's not even S S W R is not even being called. Okay, so here I'm gonna I'm gonna do uh... okay. So the thing that you have to check for, <laughs> I know what the issue is. So remember okay. when I told you um, that you have to handle edge cases, uh, and the edge case here is uh, members by default is null, um, which means. Uh, when when this renders the first time, it's going to be undefined. So you have to you you basically have to do this. So if you if there are no members, you have to return something beforehand. I'm you pretty sure I did try this, but maybe there was another <laughs> issue. I did try okay. I did try this. Okay, so I'll I'll do the I'll do the the, the hacky way. Let's see if this works. Can you try again? Okay. What? That did work. Okay. Now, <laughs> let me see what's in the hello request. Oh, the three. So now we can see the error properly. You're right. 3001 okay. failed. Perfect. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And now if I switch this back, we should say. And now we can see. The numbers. Yep. What? So what? That was your, so that was your issue. I'm I'm sure I checked. <laughs> you did that, <laughs> Eddie. What? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think the combination of like because it's very when you get an error and it's an error in a new environment, it 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 will sometimes feel like like you missed something. So I guess you did. You might have fixed it, and then there was another issue, and then yeah, you unfix true. you unfix this part of it, um, uh, and then uh, that caused this issue. So when you did actually get a fix, so the the let me just highlight the issue that we had before, which is this. Um, this. This would have given you an error as well. So if you if you refresh your page, if you go back to the page, yeah, that would yeah, have that, been, that, that was would the have, error we had, yeah. Right, and then th this is the other error you have got. So if you had, did if you did check to say that it, if it was null or not, um, you the error that you would have gotten would be the solid one. So mm -hmm. the one you you. Would, you would just not show any members ever. So if you look down, there should be no members there. Yeah. Because you're saying when there's when there's no members, don't render anything. And because um, members is not a property on the response that you get from use uh, SWR, it will never um, it will never complete basically. Uh, Got you. And then so you basically have to say this like that data, and uh, you have to say like. Numbers. This is the this is the the, the long way of it, and then you can say that. 
So, uh, oh, is there going to typo in there? Yeah, members. Yeah. Right, and then it should work. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, we got them both working. So, you saw the long form, and then you saw we fixed the short form. Nice. Okay. Right. That is awesome. That is very nice. Henry, yeah. I cannot thank you enough. I mean, you've got loads of love in the chat coming on as well, which ah, is, uh, nice. is awesome. Um, and we, you know, we're, we're all getting some love. So, uh, Naveen, thank you so much saying we're doing great. Really appreciate the support. We're all learning all the time. Um, so yeah, really, really awesome. So I have a question, uh, for you both. And, um, my question is actually, let me ask Carl's question first. So Carl's question was, would you recommend next JS over, um, create react app or is next overkill? Um, I would for, it depends on what you're building. Uh, the, the thing is with, 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 with React, create React app is um, what you end up running into is you need, you need, uh, but you start off with a single page app, right? You, you just want a certain, you, you want um, to just show things on the screen. You want to show this design or you want to show this web page. Um, uh, it's very easy. You get started with create, recreate React app. Um, you, you build out your components. That's all fine and dandy. And then you realize that you need a server. Uh, you need a server to serve up, um, an API so that you can actually do requests and get data back. Um, and then you have to go and, and learn Express and then bring up an API. And then you have to now run two services. You have to run one in development, you have to run one for your yeah. React yeah. app, and then you have to run one for your Express server. And then you realize that you need um, search, you need SEO uh, optimizations. You want your website to be picked up by um, to be picked up by the, the Google crawlers uh, so that they can see all your information. And you, if you know how single web page, single page apps work, it's it's, it's in JavaScript. So some some, not all crawlers will render, will actually process that JavaScript, will actually run it so that you can see your page. And if you have ever visited a, a React application without JavaScript turned on, you will see that it's just a blank page. Um, uh, so you basically have those three things that you will eventually need uh, for a lot of applications. Uh, and that's three different things outside of create React app. Whereas in Next, you get all of those uh, just by starting the app. Uh, so it's it's. I would say it's it's there's some trade offs uh, on both fronts. It's but for what Next gives you and how simple it makes it to get started, uh, there's there's less trade offs going with Next as opposed to going with create React app. Yeah, yeah that, ma that makes sense. Oh, okay. Same. I, I completely agree. I think if you, a lot of the use cases I think that a lot of people have is, you know, spinning up your own portfolio page or, or your own home page or just any kind of like showing information on the screen, like static page. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for that, next is just very simple. I mean, okay, we ran into some issues here that were not expected, but um this is like like typically it's much easier than this yeah uh, especially we, <laughs> right now we we've not even gotten into building the pages but basically creating a new sub um uh, a sub page is as easy as creating a new uh, file. JS file right yeah. so i think that's a huge plus and then on top of that you have um the, the static site generation mm -hmm. um and and you can do basically, you could convert it also into a React app, right? In the end, you could, you hook it up to a server. Uh, you can like fetch APIs from the outside. Um, and then you basically have everything that you have with a React app as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's using React as it's, 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 it's template engine basically. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, that gives it, uh, gives you all, it gives you all the, the capabilities of React. And more because you get a server side as well, um, so you can do the server side rendering. And then on top of that, React has um, 
Um, next has the uh, Get Started Props, which will essentially uh, build your entire website um, at build time and just have it in, uh, in static HTML files. And if you know how fast it is to the server static HTML files, it's not in a database, it's not um, figuring out caching, it's just serving like a static HTML file, your browsers will just cache that and it will be super fast on every request. Um, it doesn't matter if you're looking at a page that you submitted five years ago or one that you submitted yesterday. It's just files in the file system. And that's really quick. Yeah, that is very fast. We've got a couple of questions. So people are saying, what was the actual um, bit that fixed it? Was it, um, let me bring it up on the screen, uh, data members? Someone's saying, was it redefining data to members? Um, so what happens if we use... It was essentially both. Um, uh, it was it was both of these issues because what ultimately happened is members when you started rendering it was not so it was basically you were doing this and if oh, you yeah. do this it's it's an error it's gonna give you an error um, so you need to check um, members at every step to ensure that it's an array and uh, before you can call map on it. So the more um, the like, the more the, the the better way to do this is to like say like array that uh, is array to make sure that it's an array because it could be like your your component could have returned like a number or something your request okay. could have returned like a number or something um, so you need an array here uh, for you to call a map on it and the first issue that you run into is you have numbers here. And this meant members would have been undefined. Right. So um, uh, and, that, and then that would have led to basically this way. Undefined, if you've ever seen unmap is not a function of undefined, that's the error that you've ever seen here. Uh, and then uh, once we did fix the um, once we did fix this to reassign data to, to members, which we did here, um, there, there came the, the issue of making sure that um, members had data before it actually called members that map. Because what happens is this will immediately call, um, this will immediately get called once the, the members component is, is rendered, uh, once it's um, moved up to be rendered, and on that on that initial render, data will be null because your your um, your your fetch call has not completed it, and it means data it needs to set it to something. So it sets it to null by default. So it's expected behavior um, that it is set to uh, null by default. You just need to handle that that edge case. Um, so if there is if there if it is set to null. Uh, you you basically you you basically in the, in in um in like a perfect world, what you would do here is you you'd probably render like a loading state, like you would render a spinner or something, uh, yeah. uh, to say that this component is loaded, and then once once it completes and data and remember it is no longer a null and it is an array, it will re-render this. It will come here and say is members an array. Sorry. If it's member is not an array, if it is, skip this part, the claims member is here. Um, so that's essentially what the, the fix for this was. Got you. Yeah. And initially, initially, um, we actually did have data in there, and we just called the map on data. Um, <clears throat> But then we didn't have this. This oh, check you didn't have array. a check for it now, right? Yeah, like, yeah. You yeah. didn't have to check to see if it, if there was data inside of it. And then we decided right. to rename it as members. And then you did the check, and then it was the other error, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So as I said, if you go back to the example we had before, with when I broke it down into use effect, um, you can see exactly that in the beginning. Uh, the only, reason, the only reason why it worked in like the use the use state um, the use state example I gave is because I manually set members to be an array by default. So yes. so it was a, it was an empty array 
on the first render. Um, so members here, they said an empty area map basically do nothing. Um, once the request was completed and the use effect called the set members and it re rendered with the actual members data, then it will show the data. But you just knowing how you use SWR handles data, um, handles its, its cycle, its, its request cycle, data on the initial request will be null, and you have to basically handle that. So you it, it, it basically would say, like, uh, you could do this as well, just to make it very clear. It's loading, and then you can say if data is no, essentially. And then you can say here if the component is loading, render nothing. Well, That's essentially what's happening. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Cool. Okay, I want to do lot one last step, but if you uh, if you both need to go, I do understand. Um, I have to... fifteen more minutes, so nope. if, you, if it's a fifteen minute thing, I can stick stick around. Awesome. Okay, and uh, Mark, how are you doing on time as well? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm all in. I mean, okay. we're already going two and a half hours strong, so I no, but we're so difficult. close to finishing it. I want a working example, people watching. So um, this is this is cool. But when you need to drop off, do um, because it's a chilled live stream. So you know, don't worry. Um, okay, so one thing I'd like to do next. So we've got we've got it working. We've got the list. Um, we have the form at the top. I'd like to have the form, send it to the database, and have the list come out of the database. So. I don't think it should be too hard. I think we've done the hard part already. I'm hoping, fingers crossed. So, yeah. um, can we get the f so in the in the in the we've got hello API. So this is a get. Um, we will want. Uh, let me just change that to. If I change that to members, would I then just change it on here to be members as well? Is that how it would work? Uh, no, it's because it's fetching the the file name. So ah, you would okay, have to change hello.js to member. Right, well, let's leave it at hello then. That's fine. Let's leave it to hello. So the next thing I would like to do then is have a we need a post. So let's leave this as the get for now. So if we want to do a post, do I need to do some sort of check in here? Like if I see no post like on this bit, like in uh, Nest.js. Yeah. So post. if you do um if you write a comment, uh, let's see if um, it oh, will yes. work for you. So, um, um, like, co it. Yeah, let's say uh, a post, re post request or something. Um, mm, check, yeah. like, check, check, let's say, oh, yeah. uh, check if request is. Uh, check if request is. is uh, post. Post. Yeah. Yeah, that's better thinking. Yep. That's oh, nice. Oh, we forgot to use Copilot while doing this. <laughs> we probably could have. Get data from the request. Exactly. Yeah. Get data from the request. Yep, that's it. I don't know if you want a name, but okay. Send the response to the name. I don't know what that is. No, no. I don't think you need that comment. I don't think we need that. Okay. So uh, I think you need to handle the other case. Or you can just make it an else. So on everything else, it's if it's post, you do this, and everything else it does. Yeah, that's what I think. Everything else will be a get. So then we on a post, um, we don't just want to get name. We want to get name... Um, GitHub location. location. Um, Let's just do a console log and we'll just check that that works. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, here I'm going to do request body. Um, yeah. So now on the form. Yeah, the we... form. So we need to, first of all, we need to wrap that into some kind of like object so that we actually can submit the form. Okay, so I'll let you. We'll let one of you drive. I'll let you be both. Yeah, drive. I'll, I'll go for it, and then you can jump in if. Uh, cool. So you're on the on the form, okay? Call it sign up. Um, we have until. What is this? <laughs> Todd, just make the damn API. <laughs> I know. I just want to make it as well. <laughs> All right. Yeah, guys, you can keep talking. Um, okay. Um, would you say Copilot has a big experience, a, a big impact on your coding experience? I think it's knowing what to accept and what not to accept. But from yeah. what I've seen, it's pretty, pretty. I've only used it a little bit, but it's pretty impressive. Um, yeah. I should use it more though. 
Each, you, you also have to know what you want, because as you can see in that example, it, um, it helps to know exactly what you're trying to do. Like it's, it's definitely a co-pilot and not like the actual driver. Like it's here to help you and it will, it will feed off what you're doing or what you're asking it for. Yeah. All right. Um, Todd's very excited so, to make the API. We will, we will do it in just literally two minutes. So um, are you trying to, uh, did, you, did you close this form? Yeah, I closed okay. the form down here. Okay. Uh, so you're trying to get, you're trying to capture the information in the inputs? Yeah, that's right. right. All right, so are you going to- Can we do it with use state? Yeah, um, you can use use state. So it's, it's good to just show the, what, what the, the bare bones, are like the, the basic components of React. So if you go to the top, over to the top of your component. So another thing with hooks is that you always want to declare them at the, the very top of your, um, of your component because a, it's more readable and b uh, it you can't hooks have to uh, to be registered in a specific order because that's how React is able to reset them on, on every render. Uh, so so if you change the order or if you put them in an if statement, it will basically um, if you change the order at runtime. So if you if you're if you're messing around with which hooks get um, defined at which time? That's also going to be the cost on to where the hidden mm -hmm. Um So you just want to keep it very, very uh, declarative and just define all your state up front. Uh, so yeah. the state you're looking for is: Are you going to be setting a different piece of state for each each column for each uh, field? That makes sense. Yeah, should I do it that way? I'm, I'm thinking yeah, about yeah. it. Uh, yeah, so what you can do is, uh, what's really cool is, uh, and uh, we can refactor it later. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, and do you state. Mm -hmm. And then be a string. Yeah. It's a little bit verbose, but uh, yeah. you, you, you'll see how to clean it up in the, like, a little later on. Because the things with hooks is, uh, they're, they're composable. And what you can do is, uh, you can compose all of your um, your hooks in uh, in a function and return out of that function um, return out of the function the, the actual state and the functions that you can use to interact with the hook. Uh, so if you do yeah, and then you can do the on sign up callback yeah. And then I don't know, just call it event. Mm -hmm. And then, yep. Actually, okay. Yeah? Yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't think you want to uh, prevent the default here because what's going to happen is you want your form to validate itself since you're just using the HTML form. Mm -hmm. It won't Got actually it. do anything, but it will call your answer method. All right. Um, yeah, the next step I would have would have done is um, send that fetch request to our API, which is hello, and it's a post request, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the body. How do I add yeah, this? Yeah, that's right. Just I'm stringify. Yeah, and then name GitHub location. Uh, yeah, comma. Mm -hmm. okay. And then uh, uh, you want to change the method in fetch to be a post? Yeah. Uh, this method. Mm -hmm. Post. Yep. Right. Uh, Do we need anything else? Probably. No. Uh, so if you want to check and see if it's successful. Uh, I don't know if you want to actually. Uh, Oh, you know what? When you submit this, what are you going to do next? Um, for now, let's keep it simple. Um, I do want to do a bit on the on the API side to show people that side. You're right; it's probably not going to show the data, but in theory, we would probably want it to do a get to update the data in the page. But we could we can do we that, can as like refresh the page, or I don't know. Could we just add the 
whenever it was added, like at the bottom of the member list or the top mm -hmm. of the member list? You can do that. You can also refresh the data. Yeah. So if you pa if you move your if you hoist your um, your call for the data up to the component up to the page level and then pass the members down uh, into the members list as opposed to having a members list um, do the actual API fetching. So you basically become create a dumb component yeah. uh, and pass data in. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you can actually tell use SWR to refetch at the end of the sign up. And then that will refresh in the background and show the actual data. Oh, wow. Nice. All right. OK. Yeah, we could also do that. Yeah, so let's do the data part first. Let's see if yeah. then we can come back to this. Yeah, uh, let's check it work. Yeah. Um, so, so the other thing that you need to do now is just go back over to the API. Oh, wait. Yeah, let's test it and see if you get the, the data lock up. But yes. I think I still need to uh, change the. Oh input. yeah, you need to change the inputs. So now you're gonna wire it up. I got it. Okay. So um, if you do on change. Is it on change or? Uh, Can this call on submit? Oh no no, because you have to set the data in. Uh, yeah. Ah okay. Yeah. In, in each of the components, yeah. Um, so I have use. Uh, it takes a function with the event, so uh, it takes a function where the first element is the is the yeah, and then here you say e for the on change. I think that gives you the where where do I put the e? Yeah, in the the parameter. Yep, that's your. You can just call it event, so people know what it is. Yeah. Event and then in that event that like, gives you an HTML element, uh, a raw HTML element. So then you need uh, to get the value from this input element. And the way you right. do that is event dot. Uh, let's see if yeah. the completion comes up. <laughs> okay, so I think it's uh, also it? completion yeah. might only be on my side. Let me uh, let me see. Oh wait. Yeah, event dot. Yep, yeah, that's right. Event dot um, no. Event dot no, 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 not, not prevent default. There's another. Uh, what is it again? Event can you scroll down? Mm -hmm. Target. 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 Yeah. Target. Dot value. value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the, and then you can wrap that in your username. So in your username. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. Nice. So let's just copy this to make our lives a bit easier. Yeah. Uh, Naveen giving some tips as well. Thank you very much, yeah. Naveen. Yeah. All right. And then we have our submit button at the bottom and post request. All right. Does sign up need to be? Um, like anything special because it's saying it's not being used. Oh, I think you put sign up capital U, you can kiss. Right. Okay. Uh, I got you. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so will that then um it will, the API? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a console log, so we should see that. Let's just give that a go. Uh, out of ten people, what does everyone think? <laughs> I think ten, I'm feeling lucky. Okay. Um, so let's just do first name or full name, doesn't matter, GitHub. Let me do location A, GitHub B. Okay, so the page oh, did reload. Yeah, you need prevent default then. My bad. <laughs> but there you do that. And it did console log it. Yeah. Okay. So if you go back to the component, you need that event, that prevent default. Uh, on line on line eleven. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just put it in. Are you gonna put it yeah. in? Okay, awesome. Yeah. Cool. While you're doing that, I'm gonna gonna tie up the this part now. So that works. So we know that name, GitHub, location. So therefore, um, uh, who was it? Uh, Todd. Let's do the API part. Okay, <laughs> let's do that. So now let's check if this works. Um, right. So first of all, we need to do is um, where is it? The documentation and it's really really simple you can see how straightforward this is 
it says install astro.js collection so let's just do that dead dead simple do that there we go and then you need to um just log in with your github we'll take you to this page you create a database and uh, then you, i've got a database i think i had to use test i'm pretty sure i'm using test at the moment and you create these different key spaces so at the moment i'm going to be using one that i created earlier i i can't remember what i called it i think it is just and eddie hub is the one i'm using mm -hmm. um and the next on the documentation, it says you got to export these, but I'm going to add it to the env. Is it easy for me to use? I can export it if it's easier, or I can use it on the env with Next.js, whatever's easiest. Uh, env is pretty easy. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, so to get it to work with env and Next.js, is it as simple as Next.js, where I just do dot env? Yeah. Now we'll just load it in. That's so, right. um, okay, perfect. So I've got this on another window on a different screen so nobody sees it. But as an example, what I plan to do is to just uh, bring in those. But I will do this off screen so <laughs> you all can't see it. You might, <laughs> you probably should have just said it in the in Sorry, your, say that uh, again. You probably should have just said it in your, um, in your bash profile or something. <laughs> yeah, I can do that as well. Um, as no, but showing, it, show, showing it to everyone is actually the big So um, here we go. So I'm pasting that in. It's off screen, saving it, and I'm closing it. So it should be available now already. Mm -hmm. um, and then next on the, the docs, it was saying to, um, aren't we to, um, uh, right, well, we can do an import, I think, can't we? Uh, I think if you hover over, like I think require yeah. should be fine. Yeah, yeah. It also will like do it for you. Like you've hovered oh, really? three dots. Yeah, and it, oh, not quick fixes. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, I'll leave. I'll leave it for now. Just keep it yeah, simple. Just save time. Um, then we create the client. So we can just do it in here. Really, we would do it somewhere else, and you just kind of do it once. Um, I know I need to restart the app as well for it to load. Um, so we've got that. And then first of all, we want to create it. So to create it, it's literally just dumping the object into the database, which I really, really love. So um, for convenience, you can create it so you can say, get the namespace and get the collection that you want. So let's just see if Codepilot does it, actually. Um, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do const. I mean, we want members collection equals. Oh, yeah, it okay. does it. But we do need namespace first. There is something you need in here first, which is the namespace, which for the life of me, I cannot remember what it is. <laughs> I might have to create a new one. Um, I'm sure we can create a new one real quick. It's literally, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm using It should be one of these three, no? Or it should what? be one of these three, but I can just create a new one and I can just oh, say Nux. That's yeah, just um, Nux.js. all separate like, kind of like a sub database we we'll call it yeah. members uh and that's it and then here we should just see how good it is members collection dot thank you code pilot create and we're gonna go um uh yeah we'll just auto complete name github location um, error is it uh it gives you like a promise. Yeah, I think it's a promise. Let me check. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a, an await, so we can just stick an await in front of it. Um, wait, I prefer that. Uh -huh. Then we need and to then, make an async. Oh, you need to close it. Oh yeah, my bad. Yes, and the function will needs to be um, async. an async. And then down here, let's return a response and just say like, I don't know, successful or something. Oh, it should be status, should be 201. And then we can return JSON uh, message. Sexually. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Code wow. Pilot. That was really good. <laughs> that was nice. Amazing. Uh, and that is in the if. Yeah, that is. Okay, perfect. So in theory, we should create these members. Okay. So I've saved that. 
Let's see if it works. Let me start and stop the application to load the um, the environment variables. Will that load automatically? The Sorry, not that one. Yeah. Um, oh, you're kidding. Uh, oh my God, I just lost it. Oh my God, I just lost everything. Did you? I just did git checkout dot. It took it from my other terminal. Oh, it took it from my other terminal. I can undo. Okay, let me undo whenever yeah, file. Yeah, you can undo it. <laughs> okay. Oh, it was this file as well, wasn't it? Yeah, that's no? fine. That's fine. That's this okay. One it was fine. indexed. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> word! It could have been even worse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Was it? Was there any other file? It wasn't anything in here, was it? No. no. Nothing be, in there. Okay. They should all be fine. The stress, Eddie. Pay attention. And it's been like three hours. Um, maybe I just type it. It's just npm yeah. run dead. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm trying to save like two nine seconds. Nine characters. Yeah. Nine yeah. characters. <laughs> um. All right, some issue. Okay. Oh, lots of issues. Net Astra JS REST base your required for, for initialization. Oh, why is it not like that? Uh, create client? It should already be included. It's already yeah, exactly. I've used it in the past. Um, create client. We didn't await. We're using the, we used namespace. We use collection, members collection. Um, oh, uh, no, that should be fine. That creates it every time. And if it's a post, it will do the create. Yes, because later on, we'll want to use the get. Um, why did that not work? Oh, base URL required. No, I don't. As if you're doing it locally, but I won't want to do it locally. I'm using the cloud. It's not picking up these. That's why it's not picking up the environment variables. Mm. Um, so what, from... you can do, what you can do is you can just test it, like add your own, like test. Um, Let me, I can do an export as well if that's easier in the, um, uh, and let me just check the file didn't get reset with the git checkout as well. Let me just move this to the other screen. Let me just check that might have got reset. No, it didn't. It's still there. Oh, I see Mark having a look already. So yeah, it is there. It is, um. It didn't. I, I can do it as exports as well. Let me just do, do it as exports off screen. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then just Strange. in case a flag is needed for Next.js or something. So I want there with me two seconds. Processing. Yeah, the M file does exist. I see people asking in the chat. It does exist. Um, yeah. And I did. I mean, while time. you check, I'll check the. Oh, I know what the problem is. Um, when I copied it from here, it's DB, and I wrote database in the file in the file. So my oh, bad. Okay. My oh, okay. Bad. Let, let me just copy those over. Um, and I use no what I used. my bad. Um, okay. Name them slightly differently. That's very very bad of me. But it's always the the simplest things, you know, something like that. Okay, save. Let me close the environment file and bring it back over. Okay, and I'll bring uh, over the, the terminal again. Okay, here we go. Let's start it. That's feeling good. feeling good. Yeah, no errors this time, so that worked. Press the page. Okay, so let's do um, Eddie one. The real GitHub username. Location currently in Portugal. Pick. 500 error. Okay, interesting. Can you click on the network tab there? What? Yeah, let's see. Uh, on the post. Yeah. We got a 500. We made the request. Yeah. Um, the request payload is correct. It looks good. Yeah. GitHub location name. But there's no response because it just blew up with a 500. Yeah. Did you get an error maybe in the console, like in your terminal? Let's check. Uh, you got, yeah. Oh, I did yeah, get some. Right. Request failed object. You got a 404. Okay. Does that, your. That could be because I'm using the wrong token. That could be my fault because I do Maybe. have two. Um, and I wasn't sure which one it was. <laughs> so <laughs> I took a punt and checked it. Right, let me move it off screen again. No worries. And I'm so I might have created the, uh, the key space in the wrong, in the wrong one. 
Um, and there isn't an easy way for me for me to check. So the, probably the easiest thing is if I just go to the other database and create another key space as well. And I can always clear this up later. And we were doing Nux.js, keep it the same. Oh, uh, I think you used uh, a different name. Uh, oh, oh, next. Oh, no. Yeah, no, next, the next. No, all is good. Um, so I might have, um, I might have used the wrong one, and they're both West, so it's hard to tell what the tokens actually are. So that might mm -hmm, be mm -hmm. my bad. So let me stop that again, and that would explain the four hundred four. Um, flex. Do I have to refresh this? I should, oh, it's going to refresh anyway. Okay. Um, so Eddie two. See, well, it's yeah. looking a bit healthier. Oh, oh no! Let me check. Four hundred. Interesting. Four hundred. Mm, bad request. Why is it saying bad request? Well, let's see what it sent in the tab. Actually, let's have a look because we've got this. What is the request object? The request object. If you've used source. Okay, we'll view it pass, yeah. but it is correct. Is um, valid JSON? I don't think it's a bad request from the server. I think it's a bad request from Astra. So uh, Astra doesn't like something you're sending. Uh, true, but I'm trying to see. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes. Yeah, so what we're sending to Astra. So why would that be bad? Name, GitHub location, create. Is the collections thing? It's uh, oh, okay. create should be adding a single object. We have no ID, so a document ID should be generated. Mm -hmm. um, so that should be okay. I mean, you can specify a document ID, but there's no need. It could be, could it be because, not because we're using shorthand here. I don't think that would be an issue. No. Because that should take care of it. You wanna, um, you wanna do a test one instead? Like the test data, test member create. Yeah, so um, we can do that. So we can just go, what, name, and then just go test. Mm -hmm. GitHub, oh. Uh, test, oh. Test, location. Uh, also, the, the, next, the next thing you want to do is, if you go back, you want to return after your, uh, yeah, return after you, after your request, because oh, you're, yes, of course. You, will continue, you will continue and run. Uh, yes, you're right. Do I want to return that or just re return at the end? Just return at the end. Yeah. Right, that's a good point. Um, okay. Cool. So is that going to reload? I just thought, I wouldn't change the UI, so maybe it doesn't need to. Did that work that time? Uh, Create oh, yeah. Yep, that worked. Does look like it worked. Okay, so then the real test is how are people doing in the in the chat? Let's have a look. I think the real test is now to read it out. Live sessions are cool. <laughs> they are good when they work. Um, base your URL is when you're using their Docker image to test it locally. You don't have to do it in the cloud. So that's why you just put localhost three thousand, and it will know that yeah. it's a local thing. Um, uh, cool. Okay, so um, let me let's just bring out the data, I guess. Let's have a look and see. It seems like it's got saved. So, and we could actually, I think in here, you do get some graphs. If we go to dashboard, uh, where do I remember how to see it? I thought it was in dashboards. There is a way to see how many reads and writes you've got and all the rest. So we can see if writes are going in. We said we've got three writes, so maybe we are good. Um, okay, let's just pull out the data and see. Split out is really, really easy. We could just do, um, uh, what should we do? Um, don't want to get a single document. We could do a find. All right, let's just, you can just grab one, right? We know it's name equals to test. So let's have a look. Um, let's see. Uh, I could just do it in the post as well. I suppose we could see in the console log. Let's see. So if I just do log users or we'll just use that. and we want to do a find it's on members collection and we're going to say when name equals test so we'll create another one i suppose well that's fine 
Do you know what? I should put it on the other one. Ignore me. Let me move this down. Let me move it down to the get because then I can just hit it in in the browser really quickly. Don't even need the console log. So let's have a look. So if we go to the browser, go over here, refresh that, we should see that this should stay the same, but in the console, we do see it and we've got an ID. Okay, so it did work. All right. So we're good, really simple to save data in the database, which is what I was hoping. So now I can remove that to um, remove the console log. We can just say, uh, oh, I can't remember how to do a members list. Ah, uh, you know what? Maybe you do, instead of test, you do need to put name just because otherwise it, because name has the, like an, a value, right? Sure, it should be should short in the shorthand. It should um, if you've just got the ES6 right, it, it puts. Yeah, it's, it's just syntactic sure. It doesn't really mean anything. So if you do, uh, oh, oh yeah, location. Location. I meant to do that. My bad. We could do the full, but it should it should work without it. I yeah. Think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. Um, let's not break it and just uh, keep it working. And I can't remember how to do a list. Actually, I know Carl has done it. So I'm just want to see find all. How did Carl do the find all? Uh, it is. Oh, just to find with no data. That makes sense. So let's just remove find. And that should list everything. So that should be, can I use members again? We haven't used it anywhere else. Have we? So members. And then in here, should be able to just put this. Yeah, that should work. I think. Save it. So if I hit that endpoint now, we should see one, I think. Yeah, perfect. And Great. so if we go back to the app. Uh, no, there's a problem there. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to explain it immediately. So okay. the, shape of, the shape of your data in members that you get back from Astra is an object design, right? Oh, uh, yes. It's in so data, you, isn't it? Yeah. So you either have to do uh, the entries or something, or the keys, and then loop over each one and get the actual data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're true. What is this? Did you did you see the structure that we get back from? Yeah, so it's the ID with the actual data. So oh yeah. yes, that's true. So what you can do is you can say uh, we could do a object, map, right? Ob yeah, you can you can do object like keys. I don't know if map is coming on code for objects anymore. Not in this version of uh, yeah. So the keys, yep. And then you want to do a dot map. Mm, yep, that's exactly it. It completely it for you. Okay. <laughs> You'd be using Copilot more. We we need Copilot, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I'm, I'm not using it more. So, um, cool. Uh, I see Todd's also correcting us. Sorry, Todd, I've been really bad in the chat. Okay, so if I save that, let's refresh it. Then um, we lose the ID, though. So we do need to get ID in there as well. So what we should probably do is... We can do something like this, right? Yeah, we could we could actually rewrite that with like um, do this reduce. right. That should work. So um, ID that reduce and then that work. Oh no, wait. Uh, we need another object in there. That's true. Um, yeah, and that, that should works. work. Um, I'm happy about something. Many brackets. What have I busted? That's map. That's one more. Oh, Copilot actually fixed it for you. I, I was muted. Oops. Oh, did it? Um, yeah. So if you if you no, okay, so you need uh you need a uh, currently oh, it did, uh, yeah. It did fix it for me. You're right. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that was weird. I was like, oh. <laughs> Okay, yep. that's looking good. Okay, cool. That's coming from data stacks. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so now if we refresh this, we have one test, which is correct. So now if we add a real one, we'll say Eddie, uh, child and location, Portugal. Done. Oh, we got a 500 that time. That yeah, it's still the same issue. 400. With the 400. So what's with the data coming in then? Why, why when I hard coded it, it worked. Can we um, console log the request body like that we yeah, actually we see that we're passing in something? Oh, 
I don't like to do that. Yeah, just the body that we see what actually is being passed. It's rebuilding first. Oh, yeah. my bad. Let's do it. Oh, there, there it was. It huh. That looks okay. Yeah. Why doesn't it like when we hard code it? It works. Oh, is it because it's coming in? No, it has. Uh... Let me just. Call, I, I've I've got an idea. Let me just output these. I have a feeling something's not quite right. I have a feeling something's not right. Code pilot comments. Yeah, I should be using that more. Um, so yeah, hey Kunal, awesome to have you here. Um, you need to pass it, don't you? That's what I'm going to check, uh, Carl. I think you're right. I have a feeling we need to pass it. Um, so let me send it. I'm guessing they're... This is coming in as a string. I think that's not working, so they're coming in empty. So I do think we need to do it to json.pass. We used to... Oh, wait. Oh, did we not set the, uh, the content type? Ah, I knew it. I knew there was an issue. Yeah, I didn't have anything. Actually, can you go to the request in, in the browser? Sorry, say that again. Say that again. And the request in the browser. Let's see what the content type is. So if you go to your oh, browser's, yeah. um, yeah, and you go to hello. Uh, the, yep. the broken one? Yeah, and then you scroll down to the content type. Yeah, it's it's plain text, UTF-8. Okay. So that has to be changed to uh, application uh, JSON. Okay, and then yeah, will Nest do its magic then in the process yeah. it needs? Yeah, it'll okay. it for you. Okay, All right, it. now it's fixed and it should work now. Okay, what did you change? Let's have a look. Okay, you added in a header on the on the fetch. Okay, nice. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, refreshing, rebuilding, okay. Is it done? Yep, looks like it worked. Cool. Um, the, uh, that works yeah at all. Refresh that. definitely it looks better yeah. now okay awesome and then we've oh. got two at the bottom perfect so we can do mark uh i don't know your username mark uh, your mfts mft s okay yes. and you're in germany Okay, so I need to do a refresh on this page for it to appear. Perfect. Uh, and then we've got Kenrick, who is in Canada. Nope, GitHub <laughs> users, Kenrick. <laughs> Thank you. It's three uh, hours already, so I, yeah. you know, no one's, no one's blaming you. Um, okay, perfect. Uh, and then, yes, we've got all of us. Okay, we didn't get time to go grab um, the images from GitHub and all the rest, but uh, I can always do that in another live stream. But we have got it working with a real database, and yeah. uh, I think that's the the important part. Uh, I think that, well, I know I've learned a lot. I know that I don't like React. <laughs> <laughs> um sorry everybody but yeah i'm going to stick i'm going to see how i get on with you tomorrow as well um and uh, we will see but um big shout out to to mark and kendrick um for jumping on the stream and helping really appreciate it uh both of you please give yourselves a shout out so um i'm conscious of time as well so but mark please give us yourself a shout out and then we'll do kendrick afterwards and i'm going to share your um github links in the chat while you're both doing that as well yeah, super, super excited. Um, I mean, three hours, who would have thought um, such, a, such a great stream today. Um, thanks for everyone who, who joined in. Um, I do have like publish also some like YouTube videos on where I parse basically uh, GitHub repos and, you know, walk through them and typically do like uh, get started and installing them um, and getting them to life. But yeah, and I'm active on Twitter and GitHub most of the time. So happy to see you guys around. Um, thanks for joining in today. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. And Kendrick, we didn't get an intro from you. So please uh, give yourself a big shout out. And thank you so much again for your help. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Kendrick. Um, actually, I don't have a YouTube channel as yet. Not so, yet. Uh, we're going we're gonna to work on that. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, stick around. Uh, you can follow me at um, Kendrick Beckett on Twitter. I can drop that hook. Uh, also, I'm Kenrick on, on GitHub. You can follow me there as well. 
but eventually I'll probably come up with some because I've uh, I've been planning on streaming for a while. So I don't know when that's going to start, but maybe it's going to it's going to start uh, this week. We're gonna we're gonna be on your case. Okay. Um, <laughs> Right, okay. yeah, stay tuned. Awesome. I've just shared your Twitter in the chat as well, and I'm going to um, drop you a follow as well. So thank you very much. And we've got some things in the chat as well. So we've got, that's terrific. So thank you all so much. Really appreciate it. Um, I can stop sharing my screen uh, for the moment. Um, and there was, was some questions. Uh, let me have a look. Uh, what was it? Yeah, Carl actually had a good point that, that we no could worries. use muted and revalidate um, on S on use SVR um, so that it automatically refreshes basically the page. Okay. Um, well, I don't want to take up any more of your time today, all of you, because you've given up so much of your time already. What I'll do is I'll push up the code, and if anyone wants to make that change, then that would be uh, yeah, that would be great. That'd be great. Yeah. That would be awesome. Uh, so, yes, very cool. Um, K Kendrick's channel will start with 5K followers. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. We'll definitely support Kendrick on that. Um, thank you again so, mar so much. Mark, I want to share your uh, GitHub as well, which has your Twitter in the profile as well. That's so right. Yeah. Everyone, don't forget to follow Mark as well, um, who has given loads of time today as well. So uh, thank you all again so much for watching. And we have another stream tomorrow, 11 a.m. BST, which will be 12 p.m. Mark's time, if Mark, if you want to join. But Kendrick, Hello. your time, if you want to join, it will be way too early, I think, for you, probably like 4 a.m. or something. We're going to be doing Nux.js with Maya from Cloud Foundry as well. Um, awesome. So do do join us for that as well. It'll be interesting to compare Next.js versus uh, Nux.js. And Kelly, thanks for joining, but we're just finishing the, the stream. But thank you so much for joining. It will um, it will be up here on my YouTube channel for people to, to watch and see us struggle. But it was definitely, I learned a lot. So it was awesome, good fun. Uh, more links in the description below as well. Cool. Um, Thanks again, everyone. We'll give you all a wave. And uh, I'm going to connect with, uh, I'm already connected with Mark on LinkedIn and Twitter, but I'll do the same with Kendrick. So uh, thank you both again. Enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you are, both of you. Well, I know where you are, Germany and Canada. Um, I really all right. Thanks, Thanks so much, guys. Thanks. Bye.